Uh, are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. Uh, did a little bit off stream, just uh, making sure certain resource, resource flows weren't broken uh, and laying out more solar panels. Uh, at this point, we've got uh, we've got working anchors at Calidus, Vazanus, uh, Electra, Capellus. I think no, we don't have Capellus up and running yet. Um, I do have the anchor there, but we need to add some more solar panels. Um, I think I calculated that we just need one more ship. To come over here and that is already on its way. Um, then we've got Regulus which I think is working already. Fantastic. Uh, Hankerus. I've put down all the anchors but some of them don't have power still. Hankerus is actually... Yeah, we need all of the solar panels. Um, unless we want to remove some of this stuff, which is beaming over to where we're getting our Naquitite from. I don't want to mess with that. Um, I think I've got probably more construction ships than we need heading for Hankerus right now. Uh, and that just leaves Penthus and Anglus. Uh, Penthus, actually, we finished uh, getting going. Um... So that just leaves Angulus after this one. So a little bit of solar panels at Cal uh, Cap Capellus, Hankerus, and quite a few at Ang uh, Angulus, I think. I am the Sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we're heading back to Navis Orbit ourselves right now. Teleportation is 73% researched. I think there's also a bunch of science waiting to be whisked away over here. Um, I did bump up the provide stack threshold a bit. Um, and yeah. Uh, this one isn't quite full of scaffolding just yet. That's our last little idle construction ship. Uh, Foenestra. We, we we didn't run it for that long, because it is rather expensive. Um, but we've got we've got our power system set up for Foenestra. It does seem to be able to keep up with... What the heck is that? I think at least one of them has ice. And they're carrying other things as well. I think I see a pump in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got, I believe, I hope, everything we need to power the giant wedding ring. Um, so then we just have to make sure we get enough... Um, Antimatter stream for uh, mainly. We're only sending ice at the moment um, because the way I programmed this ship was once we're full up on ice or antimatter stream, we make a delivery. Um, but it looks like. Yeah, we're going to end up with more ice than we need here. Which is fine. Um, I might make it so that... If everything greater than zero... It's true when there are no inputs. That just means... I think I just need to add a constant here. Some arbitrary signal that is greater than zero. Um... 
Or I could just get rid of these signals. But I don't want to do that in case I want to go back on this. Um, so I'll just put fish one. So antimatter canister would have to be full. Uh, and so would water ice before we take off. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to get enough antimatter canisters to make that happen. Our bottleneck is antimatter stream again because we were missing cryonite for a minute there. Um, but judging by how full all of these thermofluid pickups are, uh, that's not going to be a problem now. It definitely couldn't hurt to, let's say, quadruple this, though. Why not? Let's send over our construction spiders. Uh, I had them down here adding like a constant combinator here so that we could request more logistic bots to make sure LDS was moving fast. Um, because solar panels weren't moving that quickly. And for a moment we were, we were out of LDS, but really that's just because there's not much storage for LDS here. So many little bottlenecks, or bits that were broken. Um, mostly because we ran out of uh, cargo rocket sections. So I was doing a new build for that as well. It's basically just bot spam. Um, we fit as much as we can under a beacon a few times. Uh, drop off the many ingredients in purple chests, and we've got a pickup station that looks a bit like this. Um, I was going to do rocket control units with better modules over here, but we're kind of short on the modules. Um, also, our spiders are looking a bit sad and confused at this point. I might head down there and... Oh, we're here. Perfect timing. Well, maybe it wasn't perfect timing, but who cares. Uh, let's take the old player shuttle. The very first ship we made. Or maybe I should just write down the module box. How many modules are in here now? Only 43. We actually had like a thousand or fifteen hundred that were ready to go. Uh, we had a few trips of big deliveries of prod modules here not that long ago. Oh, I've got a bunch of prods because I always have a bunch of prods. That'll work out. Um, let's head down to Nalvis. Fantastic. And how close are we to ships getting somewhere? About six minutes twenty on that one. I think this is probably a little bit closer. Not by much. 526. Alright, so there'll be a little while before there's something to do there. One second till we reach our destination. And away we go. Um, I was thinking when I built this block, I should really have done something similar a long time ago, uh, because it would be so easy to copy paste this for any kind of physical product when there's just so many recipes 
when there's nothing but physical in, physical out, when there's this many recipes um, to make blocks for, we don't need to spend 600 years uh, doing different designs. But then uh, belts were a lot more feasible for a while. I'm looking forward to maybe uh, with K2 and certain other mods, maybe we can do better th uh, early on for something that'll scale and that will be UPS friendly. Um, to have machines swapping items through giant containers and stuff like that. Maholic. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders. Um, they're still not picking this up. Let's put down... Is this all one robot network? Yeah, it is. Uh... Let's put down some storage chests. That should get some stuff moving. How's the anchor building? Uh, I think we've got two, uh, three, three left. I, I've placed them all, but three left, uh, three left that we need to supply more power. We've got one construction ship on its way to Capellus. Uh, almost all of the rest of them, probably overkill, but who cares, on its way to Hankerus. And then the only one left, I believe, is at Angelus, where we need more power. Beep, beep, beep. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Trying to make smarter haulers. Nice. Always fun. Um... Alright, let's grab this as well. That didn't even have any prods in it. I just want to get a feel for... If I copy this build... As far as the assembly machines are concerned... Uh, why don't we just do this? And quickly change the request to chests back. Where was my request to chest thing? There we go. Before the bots fill that out, because this these two blocks are touching. Um, and I don't think I want to go to the trouble of separating them. Those anchors take so much space in solar panels. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they really do. Alright, rocket control unit. Uh, this is half, right? Of what we can probably fit under this beacon. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, I think I set... No, I didn't. Set requests... Make half a stack for each of these. Uh, 50, whatever. That should be plenty, I imagine. Yeah, that, that looks good. Um, this goes... Here. This goes here. And can we just flip this? Looks like we can. Something's off by one. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to be there. What? One, two, three. Oh, this one's not under the beacon. Get out of here, you. Also have a chest. Okay. Something like this. 
I hope we have enough machines and prods. Well, we definitely have enough, enough machines. So, I just want to be able to support this thing. I just realized I'm kind of building this after the point where it's saturated the output. Oh well. We're looking at 34.8 rocket control units per second. And... This actually only does 13.4. So we want like three, if not four of these. Um, I kind of don't like the way this is... Okay. Uh, how many prods do I have left? 100, 240. And this would require 344. Good grief. Let's just stick with one for now. <laughs> I'll just leave that stuff there in case we want to expand it. I'm sure we won't need to. Um, I should definitely be killing the inputs for the rocket control units with only prod 3 modules. I'll just check that we are increasing our throughput regardless. 23.76, we're actually halving it. Uh, hmm... Okay, fine. Copy this down here. And maybe we'll put prod 3s in if we have to. If only for the moment. The spiders might have picked up more prods. Yeah, that might actually add up to more than I thought. Um, these storage chests though... Oh, that's going to be a problem. Oh no, I should have thought of that. Because these are purple chests. Oh no. Uh, yeah, we actually do have the prods here. So that is now... 26 per second? That's most of what this can support. That should be fine for now. We've even still got... 240 prod modules? Well, it's... We don't have to add more yet. It's fine. This is fine. Um, alright, so... Red, blue, battery, glass, iron. Um, red? Well, we've already got red here, but it's coming from down here, which is like sharing with this lot. I don't know if I want to do that. Right, uh, I mean advanced circuit. Blue circuit. Um, battery, glass, iron. glass, and iron plate, and I'm just going a couple of thousand above one train load of each. I'm pretty sure the rate of consumption for any of those is still relatively slow. Uh, two belts, actually. Hmm... So that gives us only 22 seconds to get another train, if this were to go full speed. Let's maybe not do that. Why don't we just go two train loads? Uh, 64k...
let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, we've got room for 14.4 in those purple chests. So that should be fine. And now we can finally actually defunct this old block. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, by the time I got around to actually building this, we're kind of saturated with our rocket control units again, so that's good anyway. Um, let's head back to the mall. Let's bring our spiders back to the mall as well. And I haven't actually set up a trash system over here, but I don't think... I don't know if any of the bots are holding anything that doesn't belong in these requester chests. So that would probably sort itself out then. Okay, how are our construction ships doing? One of them is in system. ETA, 1 minute 13. Nice. How much, uh, much antimatter stream are we making? Did we get this build done already? Fantastic. Uh, what's wrong? What, what, what's the problem here? You're not empty yet? There's no room in... There's no magnetic cat. Wait, what? We're looking for 204,000. Hmm. We've got room for 200k. Plus... Four, eight, sixteen hundred in the pumps, plus, uh, sorry, eighteen hundred, two thousand, uh, two thousand two hundred, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, so two hundred and one thousand, three, two hundred and five thousand. So how did we end up with this dilemma? Oh. What? Well, that resolved itself in an unexpected way. I guess... Yeah, so this is really full to the brim, so it just took a little while to pump that. Uh, and all four of them actually have fluids already. We're just waiting on... Uh, canisters. Even though this one was already easily saturated with canisters. That's kind of weird. Not one of these has had... Has received a delivery of canisters yet. Um, what's going on? We didn't have much storage of canisters. Secure canisters are not making their way down here. There's no copper. Uh, okay. That is pretty easy to resolve, actually. We just need to crank the priority on this one. I don't particularly want to crank the priority on the ion stream here. That's the downside of having shared stations. Well, it's a long time since we've had any trouble with Ion Stream, or is it? We don't have... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what's going on with copper? Where is all our... I think all of our copper plate is being poured into, like, solar panels right now. Because... For the first time in forever, we did actually run out 
Um, let's see, we need copper plate to make the regular solar panels to begin with. So it's, it looks like it's only five regular solar panels. I mean, sorry, five copper. It says 81 copper in total for flat solar panel three. 77.5 for flat solar 2. 27.5. Yeah, if you count the electronic circuits. Hmm. Did I crank the priority on this? I did not. Uh, do we need to do something about this? Possibly. Is copper... Why is copper moving slowly? I don't think this is working as fast as it should. What's going on here? Um, inputs are saturate. They're not saturated. Hmm. And yet... Oh, okay, this is actually... No, it's not the belts or anything. So where... what's wrong with our copper? Or are we just hitting a limit that we didn't previously? Oh, these are two blocks to deal with copper? Core Fragment Copper, Core Fragment Copper. This is Prod 3. Oh, I turned this off. Okay, cool. I need to remove this. Um... Okay, so... I only see one block. There's also Copper Core Fragments down here. This input is saturated. It's not... Busted? Question mark? Oh, there's a lack of... There's a lack of modules here. Uh, that might help at least in the short term. Let's make sure they don't cross the paths of any ships. And... Throw some speed modules in here. I don't think that's the issue, though. Is it just the one drop-off for copper? That we have? I, I believe it is, and there's not enough for a train here right now. Um, I see, I think, all of our orchard ships on this screen right now. That's where we get our copper ore. There's eight of them in total. Heading for Nalvis. Nalvis. Orchard. Nalvis. Orchard. 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 So they're all in motion. Uh, are we bottlenecked on the ships or something else? Considering that this isn't completely full, I don't think we're bottlenecked on the ships. Um, we seem to be getting 90, just under 90 copper core fragments per second. Um, and I think we only had, like, about that for processing. Okay, this one's actually super slow. What about this one? This can do 180 copper core fragments per second, so that's definitely not the problem. Especially because we can see it's empty. Um, have we had a dip? No, it's been extremely consistent. There's been a few little dips over here, but... 4.8, 4.7k per minute is 78.33 per second. I think we might be bottlenecking on getting ion into the ships or something. 
uh, if necessary, I could do another modern ship uh, build with copper. I think one of the one of the planets in one of these two stars that are very very close had copper core fragments. Could be wrong. Maybe it was iron. We've got a few vitamelange ones, but that's not what we need, uh, need right now. Let's see. Iron, barrel, vit, barrel, crude, 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 cryonite, vit. Uh, that's not what we need at the moment. Let's look at... Let's look at it this way. We've got... This one I've marked as a very high priority as far as potential outposts go. 65,000 Delta V from Nautis, that's relatively close. Uh, parent is Wexavis. Oh, it's over here. Same direction as where we're getting our copper from. Um, is this it? Charon, I think. Zero biters, 5k radius. I would have to go to the trouble of setting all of this up. Of course. We're so close to the end, I don't know if it's worth it or not. I haven't seen serious trouble with copper for a long time until... Well, that's not true. I've seen issues with blank data cards because of copper. We could maybe do one more outpost as a treat. While we're waiting on a few things. Alright, construction ship has arrived. And I think everything's already in place. And we just need to park it over here. Let's connect this. And then, uh, I don't know if any of these will be in the system yet. Yes, they are. Fantastic. I think, uh, so we're going to need, um, I think about 20. Yeah, we're, we're starting from scratch for surplus power here. Um, let's just bring you... How, how many of these ships would fit vertically here? Like... A little bit less than two. So let's just do it two ships back. Uh, this should be fine. And there go our ships. Put this here just to measure, and let's get some superchargers in place. That was kind of close, actually. Uh, hurry up with those superchargers, please. Where are you going with that? Oh, you're going for more scaffolding. Okay. What? Please hurry up before all of the bots die. There we go. Definitely shouldn't have queued up that whole square of... of, uh, scaffolding first. In fact, it's making it take longer to lay out all of this. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have allowed that. Alright. I 
I guess we could just start over this way. And that means they'll all have superchargers between. Um, we've also got a construction ship headed for... I believe it was... Angelus, as opposed to Penthus, yep. Also, have a look at this. Uh, oh, I kind of can't do it right now. Hmm. If I remove this... No, that's not going to be good enough. Uh, let me just temporarily take this thing off of the power network. and see just what it looks like. We can't... Oh, that's literally zero watts. But for all of this other stuff that we need to run, uh, we literally can't even see the green bar on the production part of the, the uh, display here. how much power this thing requires. Uh, what are we doing? Back to our ship. Oh, it's already left. Um, I could hitch a ride on... on the next one of these. Let's do that. Where is the next ship up? Copper plate. How fast are we making copper plate? I want to make sure there isn't a particularly severe deficit here. Yeah, no, that looks kind of normal. Oh, LDS is just leaving. No, wait for me. Uh, it is leaving, right? No, it doesn't have enough liquid rocket fuel. Wow. Okay, so our bottleneck is pumping in liquid rocket fuel? Oh. Since when do we have this kind of problem? Again. Uh, whatever, I'm just gonna ride up this uh, copper ship a little bit early. Don't take my stuff. No, don't, don't. Uh, you know what, you can take it. Fine. Okay. Less than, greater than or equal. And our ETA. Just gotta keep an eye on this so I don't get taken back. Sixteen seconds. Oh, where was that ship? Or have I not sent it to Angelus yet? I think it might actually just be in Alvis orbit. Because we're still waiting on more solar panels. Okay. And out we go. Sugan, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Saw your win and testing the other day. Congrats again. Thank you. I have a quick question for you. What mod did you use for blueprint development slash testing? It is called editor extensions. I am. Thanks, man. No worries. 
yeah, editor extensions, and if you have that mod enabled when you go to start a new game, uh, there's a scenario if you want to pick the one with all of the lamp tiles. Um, so we're still ultimately waiting on a lot of copper. Oh yeah, I literally just brought copper. Um, is that going to get delivered to where we need it? Let's make sure. I'll ride the train back. Oh, that's the lot. Yeah, because this is a generic station name. Well, hopefully the yellow light is found up here. Fantastic. Alright, cool. So that'll give us... How many canisters will that give us? Uh, we need 10 for a secure canister. But we do get a little bit of scrap back. But I don't think we can really bother counting the scrap very much. Scrap recycling does... 10% copper ore. We only really care about the copper in this context. So... We get, like, 0.3 copper back. No, wait, 0.1. For some reason I thought it was 3 copper per... Uh, 3 scrap per 10 copper. So yeah, 9.9 uh, .9 copper plate, let's call it, roughly. Whoa! Thank you so much, Windows. Go away forever. Um, yeah, so, so it actually takes 10 copper plate for one secure canister. I realize eventually we're going to be recycling all of the secure canisters, but still. We've got 12k here. What do they stack to? 50? So they should be available to the train network, but we're still, still trying to move all of these science packs. Holy. If I had had any idea just how long it would take to get rid of these science packs, um, I wouldn't have brought them into the mall. Oh, hi, Andy Gaming. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, I think I want a dedicated pickup for canisters, at least for now. Um, what I could do... What I could do... Stack size 10. And then... Request a... Alright, so we're going to ask for canisters. Uh, we're going to limit this to exactly one cargo wagon. Canister... 2,000. Um, set filters whitelist stack size 10. That doesn't reach. I am sad. Let's bring this up a tile and see how that goes. Let's bring this up as much as we need to and then bring it back down. Okay. So all of these are going to be set filters whitelist stack size 10. Uh, and we're not going to allow a train to come until we know for a fact that there's enough to fill it. Set filters whitelist stack size 10. And we're reading from the logistic train stop output which will give us a signal of whatever the train is coming to pick up. And in 
this way, uh, this just became a dual pickup, as well as a lubricant drop-off. Hi, how many hours do you have on this save? Yes. Uh, almost 32 days of game time. Nightfire, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll have a look, thanks very much. Going to embark it again on space exploration. Got to... Uh, got up to Black Science last time and T4 on all others. But there have been several updates since then, and I've learned a lot. So I'll look again. It is so much fun going back to something like this when, you, when you've when you learned a lot. Like, approaching it with, uh... I don't want to say fresh eyes. That I mean, that's true, but you know what I mean. It's like, uh... Like a whole new brain, almost. I feel the editor may help with rail planning. Yeah, definitely. There's a mod. Um, I think I saw a mod where you can actually jump to like a planner surface without stopping the game. Um, I would really, really like that. Uh, I'll see if I. Uh, I'll see if that's reliable, and maybe use that next time. Wait, 760 hours? That is nuts. Yes, it is. I have remade Rail Blueprints so many times with Editor, indeed. I'm really, really happy it, that, like, I know a couple of things I can improve, but I, I'm extremely happy with how this Rail block came out. Like, this, it's not even close. This is my best Rail block design by far. Um, for some easy improvements, I suspect, uh, that I can just have these rails crisscross like this. So then we can reduce the size of these cross thingies. Um, it might be the case that the signals will be a problem if I do that. You would think I would have already tried this, but maybe I didn't. Um... I don't know if I would want to use that to make the block smaller. Like, we could... We'd have more space for a train in here if we shrunk it down so that it was still one long train that fit in here. Uh, the downside would be that we can't really fit a long train here parked and a long train here parked at the same time. Um, given the size of wide area beacons... I don't know, that might actually be better. Why don't we, um, why don't we design that right now? We can definitely do that much easily. In fact, I don't, I, I know this well enough to start from scratch. Let's go space rail. Uh, it would be nice to have the roundabout to start with, though. Um... It looks like I just have to give it one bit of straight rail. And then as much curve as possible. Like... like that? Is that right? Is that our smallest roundabout? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So, is there a reason in particular the rail, these rails need to be this far apart? Maybe they could be closer. Uh, probably, actually. Let's see, middle is here. Yes, it is. And middle is here. So this one's a bit off. Alright, so we could do it like that. Or we could do it like that. Yeah, we could go one closer, potentially. 
let's see if we can squish it up like that a little bit. If that's beneficial or not. So we're going to have straight rail. Um, we're going to have the crisscross. Alternatively... Alternatively, it won't be that squished up in the middle. So like here. Or maybe even wider would be better. If trains could go... No, we're gonna, we're gonna have rails straight through regardless. Potato factory gives you negative 50 UPS. It's not a potato factory, it's a beautiful factory. Ragathian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thinner rail grid gives you more flexibility in the blocks. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. Um, so rail signals... Well, this isn't going to be here. Actually, we have to start with big electric poles, so maybe I should design with those in mind. It feels so bad going back to them, though. Alright, we're gonna have... I'll wait till the bots place this. Let's come back to that. Uh, canisters go burr. Fantastic. So if we need 10 per canister... Uh, that is 500. It's five stacks per stack. So five train loads per train load. Five train loads of copper for one train load of magnetic canisters. Still, a train load of magnetic canisters is a lot. Um, but I want to get them all... I want to get this saturated so that we can absolutely make sure we've got um, enough antimatter canisters as soon as possible. I would limit it to T sections. Limit. Wait, what? Why? Is your PC a little bit potato? The factory is massive. Uh, so here is our base on Nalvis. Um, and this is after trimming some things back a bit. Uh, all of these blocks are, let's see, uh, 108 by 108 for the snap size. Uh, and some of these, especially the stuff that was built with, like, tier 3 modules and regular beacons, um, some of these blocks have, like, 240 assembly machines and belts and inserters to support them. Uh, and then there's Nalvis Orbit, which is pretty similar. Four-way intersections reduce the throughput of the rail network a lot when trains start arriving from all directions. Uh... Yeah, but they don't stay there for very long unless we're doing something wrong. Like, you don't necessarily... When I had too many uh, too many trains allowed to queue up to drop off at the uh, Omni Smelter blocks at the same time, it caused some serious traffic issues, but that's absolutely not necessary. Um, or like when I... When I had too many train stations and some of them weren't necessary for, like, the second build that I did um, for Vita Melange, because I didn't take the time to look thoroughly enough through FNEI and see that, oh, um, Roast literally only, sorry, Nuggets literally only turned into Roast, I think. Uh, roast and bio sludge, and that's a terrible recipe for bio sludge. So we're not exporting roast, for example. We don't need a train stop in the middle. Um, 
But yeah, when I had a design here that had too many uh, train stations to accomplish the same thing, uh, we had some pretty bad train traffic. But if you don't go overboard with things like that, uh, the train traffic works out pretty well, actually. By going with three-way intersections, you end up biasing the trains towards taking the same direction through the network, which improves the flow. Uh, but then we can't do the roundabout thing where we can have... If we have dual directional trains, um, we can have a drop off slash pickup station just coming off of the roundabout in any direction we like, which means we can use a very small amount of space uh, for pickup and drop off stations. Combine that with LTN, and it's kind of insane the amount of. Uh, logistics we can get done at one station. The title is Post Victory. I never knew that SE has a victory condition. Uh, yeah, it has a few victory conditions from what I've heard. The victory condition that we have met is Spaceship Victory, uh, which is to run this Nexus thing. Uh, specifically, this recipe, which costs... Um, well, the minimum amount of power it costs, if you're going the minimum speed for 10 minutes to meet the victory condition, uh, the Nexus will use 6.25 gigawatts. The faster you go, the more power it uses. 6.25 gigawatts. This is a lie right here. It says it uses 6 gigawatts when at critical speed. That That is underselling it by a quarter of a gigawatt. Um, it also costs 2,000 hull stress, the Nexus does. Um, but yeah, uh, Spaceship Victory, research that, and you're going to need some factory spaceship researchers as well. Um, we managed to pull it off at 3,500 hull stress. I would be extremely impressed if anyone can get it done at 3,000. Um, unless you have some kind of, uh, some other way to, uh, unless you have some other source of extreme amounts of power, um, that wouldn't take up all of this space, uh, I would be very, very impressed if you could get this down to less than 3,000 hull stress. It even has more than one, indeed. Uh, I think... I, okay, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure we're working on a different victory condition over here. I don't know if it's going to give us a second victory screen, though. Even if... Like, even if this is a victory condition? I don't know if it's going to say victory. Um, just because we've already got it. This is without K2? Yeah, I'm going to do K2 next time. I don't think the ring is a victory condition. I'll be very curious to see what it is then. Uh, my best guess would be it lets you teleport. It's... I, I'm definitely not going to use it again in another playthrough if it is something like that, because this is just way too much power... Um, I mean, I guess th this is the one thing I decided to build a big power plant for with uh, antimatter canisters. And the reason that I did that is you get literally 0% solar power out here. Um, and if you beam power, you only get 0.34% uh, efficiency. However... After looking at the sheer amount of solar panels we need to support 
the eight anchors that we have to build at different stars um, in order to run the ring at Foenestra. Having the solar panels to support the ring itself, if we were to beam power, is literally just that again. And I think I would rather, if I were to do this again, I would rather just spam out tons and tons of solar panels, uh, like just double the amount that we're already doing, uh, so that we could run this, and the only thing we would have to worry about resupplying for power is ice, which is practically zero. Teleports you to a new unexplored star cluster with only your inventory. Awesome. The ring can be viable in a playthrough because you only have to turn it on for a few seconds. Doesn't need to stay on. That could be something. It would take, uh, let's see, 25 megawatts. Um, it would take 3,600 Naquium accumulators to run the ring for a few seconds. Uh, how long does it take? Two, 25 megawatts, 250 megajoules. So is that 10 seconds of full power uh, emptying the accumulators, I think? 3600 is nothing. I don't know about that. I think I would rather spam... Well, it's actually five times as many whole meme accumulators, though. But that's still so much easier than spamming Naquim accumulators at scale. But you could also buffer as high temp steam. Yeah, that'd probably be better. I mean, not probably. That would absolutely be better. Um, what else were we doing? The ships are probably at Hankerus now. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, we already did this. Uh, let's put this down first. And... This goes here. Uh, I guess there's no harm in laying this out at the moment as well. Cool. Uh, didn't we also have... Yeah, we're almost finished, I think, at Capellus. We've got six, uh, 53 gigawatts available at the moment, out of 60. I'm absolutely impressed. My factories are garbage dumps. <laughs> Don't say that. It's a process. You get better. Like, in this... Okay, this was a very long playthrough, but... There's a number of things I've learned in this playthrough that I'm excited to use next time. And that's even if I play vanilla. Uh, it's not space exploration specific. Like, uh, where is it? This was the playthrough that I really learned to use uh, belt-based, uh, splitter-based sushi. So this recipe right here, uh, let me just put it somewhere out of the way. There we go. Um, this recipe right here recycles literally all of its inputs, and it has five different inputs, but it's slow. It is... Oh, and it has like one, two, three, four outputs as well. Uh, this is like literally the perfect candidate for a sushi build. Um, the nice thing about a sushi setup like this is there's no counter that can be incorrect if you, like, pick up something off the belt, for example. Um, there's no circuit control necessary at all. Uh, and it is, like, 
self-correcting. And all we're doing here... Um, it, it, it's, it's really intimidating, like, to look at this to be, like, as a whole at first. But ultimately, all we're doing is uh, a number of times... Uh, where's a good example? This is one of the more complicated examples. I'll go down here to break it down a little bit more. Uh, so here we have Iridium Plate. We've already limited to half a belt. We then split that. So we've got 50% of half a belt. What is... Wait, what? Oh, the output is full. Yeah, that's a good reason for that to be... To look like it's broken. Uh, it doesn't really help us illustrate how this works right now, though. Um... Well, I, I can I can say how it works anyway, at least. So we have our belt or half belt come down here. We split it and get 50% of that. Um, well, ignore this bit for now, actually. We split it and only take 50% of the output. So since it's only on half a belt, we're getting a quarter of a belt down here. We take the other quarter of a belt and recycle it back this way with priority input. So this will slow down when it has to. Uh, and we're bottlenecking that through one bit of belt on this side. So that's how we get just a quarter of a belt. And then we recycle that back in here later on. Um, we're doing the same. You can actually see it sort of more clearly here, I guess. Um... We're doing the same thing for blank data cards and sp space platform plating, which is sharing half a belt. Uh, and if you want, for example, one eighth of a belt, uh, you do this exact same thing, but you add one more splitter. And that is what is happening uh, up here with all of these resources, I think. Yeah, you can see there's one more splitter added to this so that we halve it yet again. And then this just gets recycled back this way as well. Uh, and we have to preserve which side of the belt things are on, so we merge that back in uh, with one of these. Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What does the filter do? Uh, the filter is just set to something that's not going to be on the belt. Um, so in this case right here, it's the only thing that's accomplishing is preventing a couple of data cards being stuck here forever and going to waste. Uh, but over here, it's a bit more important. We don't want anything going through this part uh, on the left. We want to bottleneck all of this onto, like, one section of belt. Um, so to make it a bit clearer, what we're doing is this. Uh, and that's our input, and that's our output. So we have uh, one belt or a half belt of each resource coming in here. We bottleneck at one belt or one half belt here. Uh, we split, so we get 50% of whatever, the, uh, whatever this is. And then we split again, so we have 25% of what we had here. And then we just recycle the rest back into this loop. It has a priority input, therefore this right here will slow down to accommodate uh, this coming back in. And then we're back to bottlenecking it at one belt, or one half belt, and then splitting. Grats on victory, thank you. Pink pajamas, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Out shuffle the materials, I never see that. Yeah, it's cool. I've been using sushi for a long time, um, but I didn't do it this way until this playthrough. And I think it's my favorite now. It kind of takes up a bit of space, but look at this. It's so reliable, and you get this this lovely pattern. Um, and the way we're doing it down here, uh, 
you can't really see it in motion right now because of the output. I mean, this is testament to the fact that this thing works, but uh, what I did was this recipe recycles Iridium plate uh, and uses one to one to one space platform plating, Iridium plate, and blank data card as input. So we have a quarter of a belt of Iridium plate on the outside track, uh, these two on the inside track, and then we just output to the outside track again. So Iridium plate goes back onto the belt on the same side that it came out, uh, came in on, uh, and our output product goes down here. Oh, and we have a filter inserter to get rid of the contaminated scrap on the other side, away from the sushi belt. So yeah, the Iridium plate goes back onto the belt on the same side it came in, uh, and eventually gets recycled, so we maintain making sure there's enough space for the output. Very neat. It's technically only needed because you don't have slower belts in space though, isn't it? On ground you just use a chunk of yellow belt instead. Uh, well, regardless of the speed of the belt, if you're putting, like, other than one thing on one side of the belt, uh, if you're putting multiple types on, eventually you could overfill the belt, um, and then you won't be able to put your resources onto it. I mean, for the sushi mixing... Just use a chunk of yellow belt. Oh, to slow it down? That's one way to go about it, yeah. You can't do as intricate... It, you can't be as intricate, I think, with, um, with the way... As long as it's... I mean, I guess you could use more, the, the more complicated splitters where you go, like, two to three. Uh, I, I, I like to avoid these. I like to just deal in you know, multiples of two um, when it comes to splitting things. But, you know, you could do a quarter, an eighth, um, uh, let's see. You can obviously do a half belt, quarter, eighth, sixteenth for any one resource. And you could, like, add a quarter and an eighth if you want something between that. As long as you don't mind using a fair few splitters and some space, there's really no limit. Have you solved the Foenestra thing? I haven't figured it out. Um, hopefully that's what we're doing today. I mean, we should have all the power in place and stuff. On the ground, slow down each dual input to yellow, and mix three inputs into blue belt. Same deals you have there with fewer splitters. Um, I've tried stuff like that before and it hasn't been as good as this. I'm also not entirely clear on what you mean, so I could be missing something there. Uh, let's make sure we are getting this done. And that goes there. I think we have three more rows of this we need to do. Yep, looks about right. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. It breaks the second one of the inputs runs out. No, it doesn't. So it probably won't work for anything I build. No, it's fine, actually. Um, that's the beauty of it. Uh, well, one of the beauties of it. So we're actually, in fact, missing cubes here at the moment. Oh, they're just arriving. Um, I mean, all the cubes are going to get consumed, but how quickly...
Is this SE point six? No, it's point five. Uh, are any cubes gonna reach the end? Yeah, they should. We're getting a solid belt of input, so we've limited it to. Let's see. This is six point six six seven nacrim cubes per second. We're doing a quarter of a full belt. Uh, so eleven point two five per second. Yeah, we should get cubes coming up this way. Might take a little while to saturate. Yeah, the way it keep the the one of the advantages that this has over other, other most of the other um, sushi balancing methods is we keep very consistent gaps between the resources, so there's always room for an input or an output. So does the reason it doesn't break down so easily is it's not just a simple loop. Each item is filtered back before recycling. Yeah, you can see that here. Um, so what do we got? Gravitational lensing data and negative pressure data just come back up this way. Uh, we put them onto a specific size of the belt here and they just go straight back into the exact... They, they go back into effectively the same input uh, as what's coming from the train system. So they come back up here, and out here they are coming out perfectly consistently. Love it. Where's my spider? There we go. Let's go back to the mall for the moment. That's amazing to watch. I know, right? Dark Explosive QWX. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Uh... Are we done here? Yes, we are. Let's pick this up. And probably don't remove those just yet. And away we go. Um, I should definitely measure out... Uh, what's 4096? What's the square root of 4096? Do we not have a square root button? Okay, never mind. Uh, I can look at it this way. 64. Okay. Scaffolding... Sixty-four. That should be our next block. Uh, I think I'll just put these down here. That'll be easy enough. I'll have to switch all of these constant combinators off just for a second. Otherwise the ships are going to immediately auto land when I take them off. Really? You couldn't go two more centimeters to... Okay. 
The bots are really taking advantage of the free charge from that. Alright, let's start with the ones in the middle. Launch. 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 And launch. Oh. I don't think he's going to make it. Poor butt. It's fine. They'll be back in a second. Uh, and then start on the left. Because they like to clamp... Out of the two positions they can clamp to, they prefer to go to the right. And for the rest of these, we're just going to reactivate... Uh, this constant combinator. And clamp. Oh, that shortcut has two, me two meanings. Let's just use the mouse. And there we go. Alright, I think... Uh, let's connect this before we get too carried away. And I think we're ready. Fantastic. Thanks for the tip the other day that power poles which are carrying only circuit wires count as their own electric networks. I went and connected them all up and saved 10 UPS. Wow. That's really something to watch out for next time. That is no doubt costing us a few. 10 UPS. Just for that. That seems kind of silly. I'd love for someone... Like, I know Factorio is very well optimized, at least. That's the impression that I get. Uh, I'd love to, for someone to explain to me why just having separate electrical networks, even networks that aren't doing anything, uh, are so UPS expensive. Alright, so let's say... Uh, where, where are our bots? Oh, we don't have a charger over here. About this. Also, they probably don't have much more range. Let's just put this here for now. So let's suppose we go with the same train size. That would mean... This goes here. Um, and I was thinking we could stick with... Let's say left-hand drive. However... We allow trains to go either way on the straight, but it's chain signals all the way if they're on the wrong side. So, like this. Hmm. It's looking a lot more compact than I expected so far, actually. Also, one, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, I kind of like where that's going so far, let's remove that, 
Uh, let's remove all of that, actually. We'll see what it looks like with tracks further apart later on, maybe. The roundabouts weirdly look bigger when they're actually the same size because of the way the tracks are closer together. Can you answer the question? Uh, which one was that? Could you explain how Foenestra works? Uh, I've never had a single clue about the entire thing. What I do know about Foenestra is... Uh, it's... Th there, it does vary. But if we look at, let's see, delta v to works of its orbit, 17684. Uh, let's pick random stars. I think the stars are like almost as far as you can get from the interstellar map, right? Uh, Argus? Oh wait, we can just do it like this. For some arbitrary examples. Delta V from Foenestra, uh, I don't think it ever gets as high as 20k. I think the minimum was actually only 10,000. So basically Foenestra is the same distance from everything. Uh, let's include planets. 1400, 1500, 1700. I th think I saw one that was only 10k. That's only 12k. Let's look at where this is. I bet it's really close to the entry point. Yeah, 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 to the interstellar map. I think this is like 10k. Like, the entry point to a solar system. Um any solar system is 10k delta v from Foenestra. Um, so you can really, without building any of this stuff, uh, you can really take advantage of that if you build um, some kind of stopover system where you send your spaceships here first. Or maybe even build your base here. You could build your base at Foenestra, but there's no land for productivity bonuses, and power would be a nightmare. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't recommend that, actually, even if you could start doing it late game. Uh, as for this giant wedding ring thing, I've mostly avoided spoilers for this. We've been working it out kind of blind, kind of. So that's what we're working on right now. Uh, just to power up the console here, um, it takes 10 gigawatts just sitting idle. And then after a moment, it's gonna show us all of these star map symbols. And then we've got some hints down here. Uh, we've got thermofluid. We need to put in negative 273 and spit out 25 degree thermofluid. And we do have to connect it up to each of these. Uh, we've got target thingy, which is press R to move manually. These thingies right here. We have to turn all of those on one by one. Um, I think you can automate it. There's a combinator attachment here. Um, but yeah, let's stop consuming that power for now. Uh, and anchors. You can only build one anchor per star system, and it has to be at the sun. Uh, and it consumes 60 bloody gigawatts of power to, so far, just to sit idle and do nothing. Um, but I'm pretty sure our final hurdle, I hope, 
to getting Foenestra the machine working is just to put down the last few of these, uh, well, we've put them down, but we haven't powered them. The last few anchors. Uh, when you first get here, the giant wedding, wing, uh, giant red wedding ring is busted. You literally just pick up the pieces and put them down like a jigsaw puzzle. It's a bloody stargate, indeed. Yeah, so that is about the limit of what I know about Foenestra. Oh, yeah, and even though... Even though it only shows consumption 10 gigawatt here, it adds another 10 gigawatt every time you activate one of these. Uh, so apparently you need 90 gigawatts to run this. I'm just waiting for one more kick in the pants where once we set up everything that we've already set up, it needs another 100 gigawatts or something. Uh, I hope that is an exaggeration. You did find some symbols in the pyramids. Yes, I did. Uh, I wish we could go look at them with the navsat. I do have screenshots of the ones that I visited uh, in a channel in the Discord. Uh, but yeah, basically they have... Um, what is it? Nine symbols for star... Uh, nine symbols surrounding one in the middle. Uh, for, like, star... star map symbols. And then down the bottom, there's, like, these pyramid symbols as well. Where you've got, what, two or three triangle things around a different triangle thing? Uh, and they look a lot like... Where can I display this? Let's put down a constant combinator. Nope. Um, how do we get the... Oh, it's on. It's when we go to name things, we can get a sneak peek at all of these. I, I wish we could use these as, like, uh, signals. Just, like, arbitrary signals. But yeah, all of these glyphs are what I'm talking about. At least in Minecraft, it's getting the chunk of space with known position. The most expensive step, because there are 500 chunks loaded. Uh... Yes. All right, where are we up to? Um, are we still building at Hankerus? Not really. This setup is... I mean, it's a few steps to actually set it up, but then once we're done, once we're good to go, they actually build this pretty quickly. How much more do we need to finish our research? About six or seven thousand, not counting productivity bonuses, so like three thousand? Three or four? Um, yeah, I'm going to change this to five stacks. Okay. I think you are probably ready to go, aren't you? Yep, we've got some spare solar panels here. Alright, you are headed to Angelus, one of our first stars. All on your lonesome for the moment. Angelus orbit. And it'll just be a couple more trips for our construction ships before we're ready to go. Almost done here. They actually did go left to right, it looks like. Broadly speaking. Uh, 
All right. And get rid of that, please. Thank you. Don't disc uh, deconstruct the ships. Can they reach this now? Probably not. What are we up to power wise? Uh, about 37. So we need like what? Two more rows of this almost? Not quite. Come to think of it, I should have left some of that in place. Alright, fine, we'll do that. No sunk cost fallacy here. Um, but that's gonna get the bots to queue up on it. We don't want that. In fact, I should probably just fill out as much of this as I can while they're still here. Shouldn't have got rid of these. Yeah, just barely. Oh wait, that will be powered. Still getting some bot haloing around the slow charger. Whatever. Uh, what about our other star systems? Inglis, they're not there yet. Penthus, I don't think I can... We already did Penthus. Yeah, it's just Ankylos now, right? No, Capellus as well. Or is this one done? Uh, 63 versus 7. That is not finished. We've got enough for... Oh, I don't think we can finish this. Um, we are short, like, 4 gigawatts? That's actually not much. Put this here. Pick a dollies, I think it's called. The one that lets you move uh, stuff around. Yes. Fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's the teleportation technology? I've not seen it slash read its description. Uh, it's Maybe they're going to add stuff later on, but so far this 
it literally does nothing. It even says so. This specific piece of research. Uh, it just unlocks Arco Link storage. Uh, which basically it looks like it's just going to be two chests that are actually one chest. If that's across different surfaces, then, well, suffice to say, it's going to justify all the research that it takes to get here. If you were to ever go for a high... Uh, a high science per minute endgame, like, megabase... I think you'd just have to spam these, right, as much as possible. That's a cool technology? Yeah. I mean, in a game about logistics, uh, what's more hard-earned endgame cheat than just literally teleporting stuff around? Probably uses a whole bunch of power as well, but who cares? I hope it doesn't consume, like, antimatter or something. Doing well, very tired. Got a puppy this morning. Nice. Who's full of energy, <laughs> yeah. If you add K2, it does something else too. That's cool. Alright. Uh, what else are we doing? Still waiting on this a little bit. Probably should have made sure we did that first. Oh, there's so much haloing happening, despite these charges. Are we out of scaffolding? Nope, not even close. Okay. Uh, hold on, I just need to make sure this isn't audible background noise. Nightfire, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's continue designing that rail block. So, if we can only fit one train here, we're not going to be able... Let's say we do it like this. This is... I guess it doesn't really make a difference. It makes it look like we're wasting more space up here, but in reality, this would be exactly where this is, and we've actually got more room for a station on the outside. Um, we wouldn't be able to fit... I, I guess we would have to make sure that we can load or unload trains very quickly. If we're gonna have like a train station here and a train station here or something like that. Or we could just not have double... Tra we could just not have double train stations. Or, like, not expect to be able to have full throughput all the time from two train stations up here. That might actually be fine, especially since... Let's see how the spacing would be. If we used all four... Um, north, south, east, west for spots for train stops. Mm. 
we couldn't really fit more than one beacon if we did that. Uh, I feel like a little bit of space goes to waste with the size of tier 2 beacons, but not a whole lot with our current block. But if we were to squish it in a little bit like this... If we don't do the side stations, then we get, like, two beacons. That's probably pretty reasonable, actually. And if we're gonna have... If we're gonna have, like, more beacons, it's probably better to spread it out over more rail blocks. Yeah, I actually think I like where this is going, overall. Um, the question is, can we fit signals on the roundabout, uh, if we go this route? Let's get some more RoboPort range around this. Okay. Anchorus is still... Really? You've got all of these superchargers and you're all viewed around this thing. Okay. hours. Might take a break in about 12 minutes or so. Alright, let's suppose we get rid of... I mean, it is the exception that we do these straight rails up here. I want to see exactly how it would fit um, if we're doing a beacon build up this way. Burgers and fries, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How was your stream today? Factorio, I think you were doing K2SE, is that right? Uh, yeah, so let's say we have... Well, first of all, we're going to need room for signals like so. Um, we could probably fit... They're going to have to overlap. I think we're going to have, like, a station here and a station here. But then if we want to have, like, maxed out... Let's wait till the bots get here. If we wanted to have lots of throughput um, from one station, we wouldn't be able to do the overlap thing. Maybe we should just have... I don't know, maybe we're trying to squish it too much if we're going to have long trains. 
Spaceship victory done. Yes, indeed. Rayclaw. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can you show victory ship? Absolutely. Uh, here it is. Uh, I did remove the antimatter uh, canisters since we're not using it anymore, but uh, this is basically it. Um, it was actually really close in the end because of fluid mechanics. Um, we were getting slight dips in our power, which I would have thought would disable the Nexus. I'm sure it was going to be disabled, um, but we did get there in the end. Uh, that is because despite having this design where we have the water go straight back into the system, um, I ended up to, to get the hull stress down, I ended up moving the Nexus from back uh, back here, from up here. This was symmetrical, but it was one more high temp turbine generator than we needed. Um, so I got rid of one of the high temp turbine generators and slapped the Nexus down here. But what that left us with was lopsided um, steam production and consumption. And it was just bad enough to slowly cause problems with consuming steam over here. Uh, and also not getting enough water over here. Uh, that was partly solved by adding a pump facing this way and a pump facing this way. But running it at 7 gigawatt capacity... Well, 6.25-ish gigawatt capacity for long enough. Uh, it was approaching the point where uh, I think the Nexus would have stopped working. But we did make it through 10 minutes, not to mention the time that we were running it in the solar system, where we probably could have, like... We probably could have limited our speed while we were in the solar system uh, and make sure that all of our steam and water and stuff was saturated everywhere before we go full speed. Uh, that would have given us a bit more time. But yeah, uh, quite happy with this. Surprisingly, not that difficult to get it down to 3500 hull stress after we started cutting pieces out of it. Looks neat. Congrats. Thank you very much. Um, I would love to try getting it down to 3k, but I, I don't know if that's even possible, to be honest. Um, you start trying to reduce, like, ev everything you have to put in needs a bit of everything else, right? Um, it gets really difficult to squeeze it down a bit. How's progress on the wedding ring? We're getting there. We need to, we're still in the middle of... Uh, putting down the power or the anchors. Let me just make sure I didn't miss this. Um, I now have every T1 science material shipping to Nalvis except for iridite and Vita. Tomorrow I mine iridite and solve the processing of the new materials. So finally T1 science. Nice. So you need all eight of the anchors online after all. Yes, unfortunately. Raise the cake. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Gotta get some sleep. Take care, bugs and fries. Thanks for dropping by again. There's a 10% empty floor space discount. Yes, there is. I feel like there should be a bit more empty floor discount. Don't need to make weird cuts as much, yeah. All 
All right. Uh, I think I will do a little break now, actually. Um, just get words on stream started. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Alright, so we're going to start words on stream in about 30 seconds. Good luck and have fun. I'll be back in a few minutes or so.
Fantastic. Are you guys going to get the last one? Time's running out. What could it be? I have no idea, to be honest. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. We'll continue that a bit later. And... Turn off this. There we go. Alright, so how close are we to powering this thing? 122 minus 73 is... We need about another 10 gigawatts. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to move the ships back a bit. Um, before we get this done. Alright, so back to our... Uh, Potential rail block design for next time. Um, I don't like how... I guess there's no overlap with the cargo wagons, actually. If we were to do them on one side each... We wouldn't be able to do both sides for two stations. But we could actually have, well, we wouldn't be able to have room for like four belts of each resource if we did this. We've got like, oh, I forgot, I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using entities with mods um, next playthrough that can significantly reduce the number of, uh, like, belts and inserters and chests and stuff that we need to get resources from a train station. Although, I think this, uh, logistic train stop... I, th I think the train stops would be in the way of, um, one of those things for one of the cargo wagons if we did this. So, maybe not. I think we'd probably just have to go with only one station at each corner if we're going to do this. Or, I mean, we can probably have one more station if we want a short train somewhere, but that's sort of beside the point. Uh, how are we doing at Capellus, I wonder? Let's add this block here, and we got about 14 gigawatts to go. Uh, so three, uh, about five blocks. So yeah, as soon as we finish laying this out, uh, we definitely don't have enough to finish that this time. So why don't we just lay this scaffolding out here. Uh, wait, didn't I have another ship? No, I sent it to Anglers. Okay. Meanwhile, this is already done. That's not where that goes. And this goes here. Uh, we're probably keeping that bit of scaffolding, actually. 123 over... We, we need 10 more gigawatts. So about four more blocks. All right, let's remove these now. And we'll have to have these ships take off once more. We do have quite a bit of scaffolding and solar panels left. And 
just double check. Yeah, we're fine. Alright. Launch. Launch. Should let those bots get back, actually. I guess it doesn't really matter. And launch. And launch. And then anchor once more. Uh, should probably make sure it's a bit further back. What was it? 64 tiles? Um, that's it. That's 66. All right, we've got our distance measured. Anchor to about here. Switch that back on. Copy paste to the other ships. And have them automatically connect. What the? Uh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Also, whoops. There we go. Alright, let's, uh, first of all, don't forget the extra charges, and then we can pretty much do what we like. I might just place as much of this down as possible, so we don't have to look back here for a minute. Alright, cool. How's our ship at Anglis? It is still on its way. Three minutes ETA. Um, back to the rail block design. We're not going to be able to... Alright, if we do this small design, the... It's pretty obvious where the power poles are going to go. Um, but let's suppose we use Allen substations. I don't suppose that's going to reach. No, that's a little bit unfortunate. There would just, it's just barely big enough so that there would be a gap in the middle and we would need three of these down here. What if we went for shorter trains? Is that a terrible idea? If we went... Hmm... What if we went locomotive, cargo, cargo, locomotive? So this would go, uh, one, yeah, one, two, three, four. So we're getting rid of seven sections here. And of course our trains are repathing even though we're removing signals from somewhere totally unrelated. 
And this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, except it goes up here actually. Well, we're going to have the same issue whereby if the roundabouts are like this, and if we can fit one train in here, we're not going to fit two of them in like this, actually. So maybe I should make it a little bigger. Um, the pylon substations should be able... No, they would still not be able to reach each other. So we'd have to have, like, there would still be a gap in the middle. We'd have to have another pylon substation in the middle somewhere. Hmm. Oh, we could just have this in the middle here. That might be kind of cool, actually. Let's wait for the bots to finish what they're doing here. Uh, so, we should have this one working before we go back. Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Well, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll just double check the number of anchors we've got working. Even though I'm pretty sure it is three that we've got to go. Seems like they finished up here. Can they even reach that far? Yeah, they can. Alright. You know what? I should just head over there personally. That would be a bit faster, wouldn't it? Or I could even... I'm not carrying any space rail, actually. Good grief, these bots. Oh, they're moving again. All of a sudden. I'm guessing my bots aren't going to do anything because all of these jobs are reserved. Alright, so there is... These two pylon substations can't reach each other, I'm pretty sure. And there would be a little gap for power in the middle there, but do we care? Let's find the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. And six. So this would be here. Um, and if we copy this across. What the? What is? Oh, that's fine, I guess. Is it though? Uh, I feel like something's a bit off here. Regardless, that should be the middle of all of these. It's off by one. And then if we get rid of that, does this connect diagonally? It does. Okay. I think I like where that's going. What? No! There isn't actually... Wait, what? 
Hold on. Something is amiss. I think we're missing out on some symmetry here somehow. Charge a bit more aggressively here. What are they doing? That's a bit strange. Okay, so let's check our distance. One, two, three, four. That's not going to fit the train. This isn't symmetrical. I think. Let's give the bots another millennia to sort that out, I guess. They got scared, indeed. Bodie McBoatface, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Every time rails look symmetrical, but I always end up copy and rotate, copy and rotate a dozen times to get things to actually line up. Yeah. Uh, we need to give this just a couple more minutes before we can lay out all the solar panels. Okay. I think I probably will end up going for a build big enough for four cargo wagon trains. If it shows the four wagon thing here, doesn't that mean there actually is enough room? Yeah, because the it doesn't show the four if I do this. Okay. But how could there not be a middle? Um, this is six, this is six, that should be the middle. Except no, because... Doesn't look right. Um, does it matter how these are rotated? Oh, it does. Okay, I think I see where we probably went wrong there. Uh, did I do this part wrong? Let's remove all the signals. Not the rail, though. Uh, what? What is this blueprint? Blacklist? I don't want it to be blacklist right now. I don't... Wait, what? Nunny? Blacklist? Straight rail, curved rail... Oh. Oh, I think that was a different... Okay, okay, that's what I want. Re remove that, please. Just the signals. As much as it's going to pause the game every time. And there's yet another one. Uh, actually, these two aren't going to change. Alright, so we want this as close to here as possible. And same thing on the other end. And that, yeah, okay, that's better. 
that's more what I would have expected to see. Um, so there should actually be a middle. And if we flip this... If we flip this, uh, it actually works. use something else. Oh, no. Let's use this to measure where the middle is. Six and six. Pylon substation. Get rid of that. And then, like so. Should have done that before, actually. Oh, hey, you finished, Essie. Yes, indeed. Ian Newer, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, is this it? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, so now I just want to remove these. So how would that look power-wise? I think that would be pretty neat. Uh, it covers pretty much everything that we're going to put in this block. I also had this problem in the past. Then I used a rail blueprint from somebody else, which is actually symmetrical. I know what a cheaty person I am. Maybe next time I try the tape measure mod. Tape measure mod, that sounds good. Spajo AG, aka Geek, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, really want bigger blocks than that, so you can fit a decent sized build and not have 50 copies of everything. Yeah, I'm playing around with, um, different possibilities here, that's all. Um, I guess we would probably be cramming everything under one beacon if we did this. So we would have, I should really start requesting some straight, uh, some space rail. Space rail. Let's go grab some real quick. Much easier to get symmetry then. With the three lane space between intersections, what happens when you copy and rotate 90 degrees? Uh, what do you mean? I, I can't... Oh wait, I can rotate with signals. I just can't flip. Alright, give to me some space rail, please. There we go. It go the coarse grid to align to. Coarse grid. I'm using the city blocks from Nilus. They're 100 by 100. Our current grid is 108 by 108. Oh, I haven't tried yet. I think I... Okay, I think what I'm going to end up settling on is these roundabouts, if we can use those. Um, like, basically this block, but with a tighter system for swapping 
the direction on the trains. Um, I did want to play around with this idea though. We're talking about the pause mode, shift plus space. Oh, this thing. Yeah. All right. So, oh, that is, oh, wait, wait, wait. I was going to say that's a perfect fit. However, there's just one little problem here. There's just one slight, slight problem. And that is we can't fit signals in between these two stations. Unless... Hmm. Uh... Okay. That's interesting. So they're two separate rail blocks. I'm pretty sure a train would be allowed to stop here. A train could come in, a train could leave this way, and a train could leave this way. But a... Wait. What? Since when? Wait, wait, wait. Is this... Does this work just like if I did this? Or... Or can neither of them go straight through the other station? That's only a 1 to 3 train on either side. Uh, let me grab some locomotives. We'll test this. Locomotive... Actually, one-to-one -one ratio now, I guess. I think there's a mini block in between the stations that is one way. Yeah, I want to see how this works. Or no way. Yeah, that's what we're going to find out. Where are my locomotives? Here they come. Alright, do we have fuel? Yeah, we must have fuel, because we use jetpack. Solid rocket fuel. Alright, let's check on our outposts. Fantastic. And then... That's probably it. That'll be our power at uh, Hankerus. Capellus, we are missing some resources. Let's just mark these tiles down. Get rid of this stuff for now. I'll leave what scaffolding we've got here. And how close are we? Uh, we're actually devastatingly close. We need half a gigawatt. Can we just... I, I don't suppose... If I move this scaffolding over there... Uh, all right. Remove tile ghosts. Move this here. Lol. Uh, 66.7. Yeah, we need literally half a gigawatt. So that's 500 megawatts. Um over 12.2. We need 41 flat solar panels. Could we fit them over here, perhaps? I think we probably could. That's, that's already 47. Let's do this thing. Uh, 
Also, let's do this, I guess. Cool, won't have to make another trip. Uh, we're a bit full on bots right now. Let's see if we can't remedy that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Hook up the ship to the grid? Uh, we don't need to. I don't want to marry this ship to this spot either. And... One more? Two more? There we go. I don't do that. Wait, what? Uh, what? 150, 150. Oh, I see. Okay. Whatever, as long as we got our pots back in here. In fact, I'm just gonna just turn that over there for now. Launch. And anchor. And we won't need anything more than maybe a construction pylon. I've already got it, actually. And that should be our power. Beautiful. And back at Foenestra, we can see there's just two more anchors to go. And you can head back to Nalvis Orbit. What about down at Hankerus? Uh, 147 minus 73. Oh, we went significantly over. Nice. Literally just one to go. Uh, yep, there it is. One more anchor. How much scaffolding do these ships have left? Solar panels and stuff. Zero. You can definitely go back to Nalvis Orbit. Uh, zero. Just a little bit. This one's actually got quite a lot. Still got plenty of fuel. So you can go to Angelus directly. This one has solar panels, but not scaffolding. Okay, I think... Hmm. Uh, this one can go to Angelus. The other two straight back to Nalvis Orbit. I almost forgot to clean up our mess here. What's that giant structure? Uh, it's a wedding ring, apparently. Or a stargate, either one. We're trying to find out. Okay. Space donut, <laughs> indeed. Emo. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, you can go back to now this orbit. And you can stay until you clean up this mess.
Oh, that was the wrong type. Good morning. Good morning to you. Looks like they're already on their way to pick this up. Do we only have like seven bots here or something? No, we have like 127 construction bots available, but it used the several that were already queuing up to recharge. Uh, it reserved those bots for these jobs over here. Ravna. Okay. Uh, let's put down our locomotives. And... A bit of fuel. And I presume... That would connect them, but this should be fine. Alright, so you can go over here, please. And... I can't... Yeah, I can't path it through the train stops. It, it, it's illegal. Also, we need more signals, apparently. Could you please stop? And I'll just confirm, bring this over here. Head to this station. Head to this station. What? Oh. Oh, I think because all of the signals are chain signals and we haven't got this one in its own little spot just yet. Uh, that's why we're having this issue. You can go... Uh, what? I guess that works. No. Just... just... Just go over here. Is that a mini city block? Yeah, I am considering it. Uh, and then you... Yeah, I'd say this confirms it. We can't path the trains through the other stop, which is fine. I can live with this. Um... Actually, could you go here first, and then here? So cute. Thank you. How much smaller is it than your existing blocks? About this much smaller. So we've got... Let's call it a quarter of the space to work with with half of the train size. All right. So that worked uh, exactly as we... Well, I mean, we had two possibilities in mind for how these two signals here would work. Um, the trains are not allowed to go through the stations, which is fine. I modified your big city block to be a right-hand drive and removed a rail between the station rails. Moved a rail between the station rails. Oh, as in just squeezed this in like this. Because trains can be weird when they need to change direction, but can go straight on as well. Uh, I'm not sure if 
I'm not sure if I follow. Okay, I like what we've got so far, but what I'm a bit concerned about here is... Yeah, we definitely don't have... We... Hmm. This would have to be right-hand drive. For the straight rails. But that's sin. But we don't have a choice. Um... Let's suppose that these signals are going to work out. Let's, let's be optimistic here. That looks a bit weird somehow. Yeah. There we go. So we're allowed to go both ways on the roundabouts. And the straight is going to be right-hand drive only. Which kind of kills something that I wanted to try next time. Uh, we're not going to be able to have... Yeah, these signals are going to be useless. It looks like. Hmm... Okay, I think this one is a bust because of the signaling, which is a shame because I liked how this fit together with the smaller trains. Um, I think... Well, we could probably still try the same thing, but uh, with the straight rail further apart again. Let's just remove all the straight rail. Why not remove the crossing? Wiggling through the roundabout takes the same amount of time. Uh, because they have to be able to swap so that the roundabout is bi-directional. So that we can have, like, this or this. Why are they taking... Oh, no. The bots think they're helping. Uh, you know what? We've got a bunch of rail. Let's move up here. Get a fresh start. I'm glad I didn't remove the scaffolding earlier. Colors and oh yeah, you're ready to go home. Office orbit. How much scaffolding is that? Basically none. Fantastic. Uh, we've got a bunch of ghosts here that we don't need. Let's just leave that there. So now they all just need to descend on Angulus. And I think we'll make this part the middle. Scaffolding four by four. Once we've got those, uh, that's five by five, uh, five, yeah, okay, Not five by five yet, but all right, so once again, circle. 
with one bit of straight there. And then we're not going to do these as close together as possible, but rather a little bit out from the middle. Let's get confused. There we go. So this was here earlier, right? Uh, I made it a bit hard to see, but yes. I should pick up more rail, maybe. Um, I want to have... Let's, let's still try and make the small trains thing. I want to maybe have things significantly different for the next playthrough. So we need to have just barely enough room for a short train here, and then that goes there. And that's not quite right. Get rid of that so that I can copy paste flip. I should probably do this part first. One, two, three, four. Alright, so that would go here. And we should have. Well, there's more than enough room. Hold on, let me change this setting real quick. Interface. Train visualization light is four. Fantastic. Okay, so can we do the crisscross? Isn't this going to look exactly like our current build? No, it looks a bit different. Yeah, that definitely would save some space. Uh, if we can pull off the signaling with this. Um, but it looks like... We won't have room for a train in here if we do that. Hmm... Well, I guess that means if we're going to do this, we just have to extend this out a bit. Um, so one more cargo wagon. And then it should be easy to have... Train stops where we want them. Why don't I have a... Wait, what? Oh, I've run, I've run out of rail. Why have I run out of rail? Let's send the spider back for some rail. Change your requests a little bit. Remove everything. Space rail. Some signals. Uh, that's probably enough, honestly. That seems way too close from before. Should the station not have a normal one-way signal when you enter the platform? Uh, it depends. We'll see. But yeah, we'll easily be able to fit two trains at the same time here. Uh, and we can fit a train up here. So it'll be basically the same as our last grid, but with trains that have half the capacity. 
Um, uh, and I also, I, I really want to, regardless of whether we go for the short trains or not, I want to try this on. See if we can... Oh. Uh... Let me get rid of this straight rail for the moment. Get rid of that. And then... Roundabout looks like this. Straight rail... Question is, are we going to be able? Wait, why didn't you get any? Oh, you did. That's fine. The rails occupy like half the space in the factory. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, proportionally, they will occupy more space, but we had a lot of empty space in most of our blocks. Um, so that shouldn't be that much of an issue. But yeah, again, regardless of if we go for the short trains or not, uh, I do want to try on this, uh, particular roundabout layout. And we need to... I guess... Allow that to be both ways. And cut that up. We're not going to have room to... Hmm. I'm not liking how many signals this is going to take at this rate. Not that we didn't need a lot of signals here. So the idea is permitted to go both directions everywhere except we're only allowed to stop uh, left hand drive. in the straight rails. I'm curious to see if that works. It's probably going to take even more signals though, which I don't like. So these would all have to look something like this. Should probably design this in like another save where it doesn't take a good fraction of a second every time we put down a signal. Yeah, so we also need I guess technically we don't need signals in here, but I guess that's fine actually. All right. Let's let's see our signal count for each roundabout. Uh 96 versus what? What what's our usual signal count for a roundabout? Uh, this will be plus two. 
68. That is a significant increase. Uh, for that reason alone, I don't think I like the... I don't think I want to try on trains being allowed to go both ways on the straights. So we'll get rid of that. The outside signals. I think it's going to be easier if... If I just remove all of these signals and start over, it's going to be less confusing. Uh, hello? Whenever you're ready. Good grief, that was worse than I thought it would be. 24 of the signals were not providing value in that layout, though. How so? Dead Jim? <laughs> yeah, that was... that was worse than expected. Okay, so how many signals would it be if we signal for left-hand drive except for the roundabout? The ones inside the X do nothing. Two UPS? Yeah. Going for the world record. Can we get to 1.0? <laughs> Only time will tell. Alright, so... So this part is actually... Gonna go like that. We want you to be able to go both ways here. No, we don't want this, actually. Um, if I do it like that, there won't be room. Okay, so because we're not going from here to here, that's actually fine. This one can go up this way. And then... does that mean this goes here? I think it does. And there probably should be a signal here as well. Maybe we don't need to use as many signals. I wish I had a better idea of just how much signals impact UPS. One of my ideas was indeed a smaller city block and let the train stop in a separate city block. Don't need the ones on the diagonals, the trains just blast through that. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It also makes it easier to read this. Not that we read it very often. Okay. So, left-hand drive train can go clockwise. Can go counterclockwise. Train coming off of roundabout can go here. And can go here. That seems good. That, yeah, that might be all it takes. And then... Like that. Uh, we will need some signals in here. If we're going to cut this up into quarters. Well, not quarters, eighths, actually. Which we are, because the straight rails. So, because we're doing this... We are going to need signals here. 
Otherwise, these two will be meaningless. That's that's backwards, actually. It has to be here. Okay, I think that's it. Straight lines in the middle are not useful. Uh, they do. They, they are. They let the train go straight through the roundabout. Due to signaling, there's no path that takes the straight that can't be done via the roundabout. Yeah, but the roundabout slows it down. If it if it wants to go straight. Uh, and considering how high the top speed of trains are versus their relatively low acceleration. Um, that's actually pretty significant. Um, is that it? Pretty much. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's our roundabout. So how many signals is this? Only, f uh, I was going to say only 56. It's actually 60, which is fine. It's a little bit less than we had before. Let's remove this for the moment. Bots are making this a little bit hard. There we go. And then... Copy-paste like so. So we can fit a short train right there. Why is this one flashing? Oh, we don't have, we physically don't have signals. Okay. How many signals is this already? Uh, 224 plus 16, 240. Stuck with three-way intersections only. They each have nine signals. That's those are rookie numbers. Th three-way intersections are superior. Uh, except you can't you can't get a station off of a three-way with just this. That's the difference. All right, I might just blueprint this. Um, I'll trim these bits off the end. Oh, I want to see how the power poles line up as well. First of all, I don't think we're going to have much trouble with big power poles. Uh, something like this, whatever, easy. How does it look with pylon substations? That actually sort of counts for a lot. Is this the middle? I believe it is. And that would go there. So we've got one pylon substation in the middle would cover pretty much everything and we'd have cool diagonals for the power for the wires. Um, we could have a single wide area beacon. Hmm. We could actually have two wide area beacons supported by this block. I don't know how necessary that would be when we've only got short trains for input.
Oh, I didn't blueprint this yet, did I? Uh, let's make a book. Uh, that is not a book, that is a blueprint. Can, can I get... There we go. Uh, this is just going to be... Two-way short wheel... Raft... Just gonna shove it in there without a name for now. Alright, so rail goes there. Rail goes there. Uh, we need signals here. And here. And we should easily be able to fit two stations at the same time. Separate those. Same thing down here. So we have up to two stations for input and for output. Um, we could definitely fit the maximum for chest input output. That's if we're doing vanilla chests. Um, but I think I want to use the big chests. I'll probably only end up doing a pair of 6x6s six anyway, but I wouldn't be able to fit those up here. Um, wide area beacon. We could fit a couple. We wouldn't be able to get the maximum out of either of them. I don't think I'll end up going with this, but uh, the way some of it fit together was kind of neat. Alright, let's go with... let's go with the four length trains. But with the same roundabout. Oof. Okay. It's going to take a moment. I might design this later. I I'm happy with that roundabout. I'll probably use that. I'll, I'll probably use basically the block that we've got, but update the roundabout like this. Um, so the crisscross bits take up less space, which means... I was going to say that means we could have... We could make the block a little bit smaller. However... That would probably mean... If, if we make it small enough that we can just fit a long train in here, then we would get the overlapping stations. So I might make it just small enough to get the... Um, to get the two trains simultaneously at each cardinal direction. Could go 262. Two. That's a thought. Something to consider. Um, the roundabout is sort of the main variable that's like least easy to redesign. Um, the rest is all just stretching and squishing. So, yeah, I think I'll just steal this roundabout design later on and play with that. 
Uh, we should probably check on our solar panels and stuff. This ship is still doing its thing, actually. Hmm. Uh, it's almost finished with the scaffolding, though. Let's just put in a couple of uh, radar construction pylons to do the bit right up the top. We could save a lot of space putting the exchanges inside the intersection, rather than before or after. Uh, if that's possible, I'm intrigued. Let's try it. I, I think we're going to run out of room for signals if we do that. Yeah, I think the rail is going to be too squished up. Alright, let's get rid of this for now again. Don't need all those signals? Kind of do. Alright, um, so this is my roundabout. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Um, I guess I should just start by removing the crisscross bits. So we're trying to smuggle the crisscross inside the roundabout. Probably just remove that. Uh, I've made it a little bit complicated. Let's remove straight rail from here. This is properly filled out. What's the problem here? Oh, I see. Okay. I think this is a decent starting point. Uh, aren't these too close together if we're just gonna do this? No. No, they're not. Hmm. If we remove the power pole from the middle and crisscross all of these right here, well, they're not. we're not going to be able to use that to swap directions on the roundabout, though. I don't think there's a way... to do this. That's going to end up absolutely terrible. Um, well, we can already go counterclock uh, clockwise from here. We want to be able to go counterclockwise from here as well. Which is just going to end up looking like what we had. There isn't, like, another way to do that. Right? Cannot fit both north, south, and east, west exchanges at the same time, though, I don't think. Yeah, no. Well, 
unless we did something like this, which I definitely don't want to do. I'm pretty sure this is as tight as it gets. Yeah, I think... I don't see it getting much better than that. Unless we can accomplish the exact same thing with fewer signals, but I'm pretty skeptical on that one. Okay. Where are our ships? Uh, oh right, I forgot we're done here. It's literally just Angulus that's left. That bot haloing is worse than I expected. A lot worse than I expected. Why don't we add these? And as soon as they're placed, I'll temporarily delete the uh, radar construction pylons. That'll get... Uh, I guess I don't have to worry about this one. This one in particular. Whatever, it'll still get the bots to hurry up. Who's coming to delete this? I'm just waiting so I can hit undo. Good grief. Of course it would be the one that didn't need our help where the bots immediately respond by deconstructing. Are our ships back to Navis orbit yet? They are not. Uh, at least one of them is... Yep, they're all coming back in now, though. Alright, cool. What else do we want to design for the new playthrough that we can do already? Um, I've kind of got the gist of the re uh, the dispatch system for Foenestra, but I want to do that in a sandbox to play with ships while we do it. Alcosphere balancing go burr. How's our science coming? We've still got 760 tier 4. We're actually waiting on catalogs this time. Uh, how are our catalogs doing? Wait, the output is full? What? Nani? Oh, I s Oh, well, there's your problem. Whoops. Uh, actually, that should just say 2400, and we can just adjust the limit. Yeah, that... that was a mistake. I wonder how much science we're about to get all of a sudden. I mean, we do just have the one machine doing this, but... Is it not under a beacon? We can fix that. Much better. Alright, so... 400? Is how much it'll take for a train delivery? Uh, and that's going to give us... Uh, 3,200 science. Why are we delivering one Aquium processor at a time? Uh, whoops. 
Also, what on earth are you doing here? Comprehensive... Oh. Yeah, no, don't... don't do that. One resource at a time, please. Probably best if I wait for a full train for that one. We're actually closer than I thought. Construction ship has arrived. Construction ship is already fully resupplied. Uh, off you go to Anglis. Fantastic. More are coming. And... There's actually only one destination left to send them to. I don't have to think about which ones are going where. That's good. How much... How much antimatter canister do we have? That's quite a bit, but I, I don't think it's moved since I checked on it. Oh wait, that's because we're only requesting 2k. So why are we not launching? Ice is full. Antimatter canister is full. Everything greater than zero. Negative, almost 2k on this. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, we actually do have to remove those signals if we're changing it to everything greater than zero. Except... yeah, no, that's fine. I could also put negatives for how much water we should have. How much water should we have? 24,000? And uranium fuel cells as well. And I don't care how much... Well, I was gonna say I don't care how much used up uranium fuel cell we have, but we should at least be getting rid of it. Um, okay. 97 of those... Water, 24,000. Uranium fuel cells, sh used up ones, should be getting delivered here. I guess I could just do that. Oh yeah, because we're not reading from the robot network. That's why I had to do that for magnetic canisters. Okay, that's fine. Smelting setup? Uh, I think the smelting is going to be a bit different for the next version. And or with um, K2. So I can't really do that until I update. And that goes for a lot of things. Rail, though, is pretty universal. Alright. Construction ships are waiting on scaffolding and also solar panels. Solar panels are being produced. I could go and give these better speed modules. Um, let's see. Only th it's only consuming 
It's consuming most of a belt of glass and most of a belt of iridium plate. Oh, that's all one robot network. Let's just give this uh, faster speed modules and see how it looks. Space manufacturing. Depots? That's a good one, actually. I was thinking of, uh, well, rethinking depots in a couple of ways. But one thing I was... I don't think I'll end up doing this, but I was supposing maybe it would be good if we could have, like, a little mini depot uh, that we have in many, many places. So that there's always a train that's very, very close. Like, it would be overkill, but if we had, like, a single depot stop at each block, then the train would hardly have anywhere to go. But at that point, you may as well be using vanilla. Um, I never did get the advanced fluid wagon depot to work the way I wanted it to. Um, what I was hoping to do is, instead of needing all of this, to have a fluid depot where we, if for some reason we had a train full of fluid that we wanted to send back, when it went back to the depot it would drop off whatever fluid it had, and that would be available for pickup. Um, I was hoping with some advanced circuits to make a version where basically if a fluid wagon came back to the depot with fluid in it, uh, the depot stop would turn into a pickup stop and then uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, the train would come back to the depot, drop off fluid, the stop would become a pickup stop, and then it's a very high priority pickup. That fluid gets taken somewhere else. Uh, as soon as this is empty, it turns back into a depot. Um, but we ran into some surprising problems with this that were difficult, if not impossible, to solve. Not gonna happen since the station is occupied. Yeah, well, let's have a look at what we did do. Um, so, provide priority a million makes sense. Uh, stop is depot is on a combinator. If green signal greater than zero, stop is depot. That's coming from this memory cell. This is an this is a latch, isn't it? Green greater than red, output green one, attached to itself. Uh, if green less than or equal to zero, output provide threshold. If green greater than zero, output stop is depot. Each plus 100k output each. That's coming from here. So if there's any fluid, we pretend there's lots of it. Um, we would need a... Wait, wouldn't that throw something off? Like, the LTN train would try to get 100k of something, and then it'd be, like, stuck here. Why did I do that? Everything equals zero, output one green. Okay, so if there's no fluid in here... We output green. That goes to the memory cell. Uh, if if there's nothing here, it's depot. I'm sure there was a reason this had to be a memory cell. Uh, if T signal T train detected equals zero, output red. So we hold on to the idea. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We hold on to the whether this is a depot or not until the train leaves. Uh, that all makes sense. Except maybe the each plus 100k. Oh, and then for the uh, pumps, if green greater than zero, meaning it's a depot, then pumping from the train. If green less than or equal to zero, pumping to the train. I would just increase the buffers a bit so leftover fluids doesn't happen. Uh, we've already got double what the... Um, We've already got double what the fluid wagon can hold on to. And we do want the minimum number of, like, pipe sections. You could check the LTN cleanup mod, which is quite useful for designing stops that solve leftover fluids. Maybe Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Night Dancer, good to see you again also. Agathian, if I didn't already say so, I think I did. Welcome, welcome. Are you doing the requests too early then? Uh, no. No, we don't. We don't have a provide threshold. Like uh, the, the default provide threshold under mod settings is so high that it effectively doesn't exist. Um, and then we don't give it a provide threshold. We don't say that this can be a pickup station until the train leaves. Hmm. I wonder what the problem was. This all seems pretty good so far. I'll have to simulate it. Uh, how about our construction ships? Still waiting on solar panels mostly. It's actually just solar panels. We are producing them. Oh, what's our rate now that we upgraded those modules? More than one belt of iridium plate, more than one belt of glass. And yet, it doesn't look like that's what's happening here. Oddly enough. Oh, because we're bottlenecked on LDS. Okay. We should actually look at how many more solar panels we even need. Are we out of scaffolding? Uh, yes. Yes, we are. Alright, I guess just place down what solar panels you can for now. And head back to Nalvis Orbit. Actually, maybe you should just stay here, hold on to these solar panels, and I'll send ships that just have scaffolding right now. I mean, they don't just have scaffolding, that's actually quite a lot of solar panels as well. Let's just not worry about waiting till they're full. Angulus Orbit. Okay. This one's also got quite a few solar panels. Considering we need uh, 5,100. Having at least a tenth of that in one chest isn't that bad. What's the fastest ship you ever designed? Just managed 340 speed, sub 3k integrity seems to get harder and f harder to make it faster. Um, well, 
Uh, I mean, yeah, it does. It's like tyranny of the rocket equation kind of thing. We could take this for a little spin without the Nexus. That would probably be the fastest ship that I've made. Uh, this thing goes about 230 something. Our player ship does. The haulers that we're using now, when they have 70 chests that we can use, uh, they're only going 140 now, actually. It was it was very similar speed to the player ship when our max hull was like a thousand. Um, I guess we should put some fuel in. We've got water. If anything, we've got too much water. It's fine. I'm sure that state of affairs will change. What are these bots doing? Stealing my signals. Okay. So, this is 3.5k hull stress, container stress, well let, let's see how low the stress goes if we remove this. Uh, I guess the hull stress isn't going to change much, is it? Yeah, no. It's actually the same. Never mind. Um, in that case, I guess I should have not brought this stuff back here. It's kind of a waste. How's our Foenestra resupply going? Looking good. Hold on, shouldn't we be... Antimatter canister. Antimatter canister. Request from buffer chests. 1.7k. Pick up 24. Wait, how many bots do we have? Only 50 logistic bots and they're all occupied. That's why. Hmm. Should... Maybe I should have this ship bring bots as well. No, I'm sure 50 is enough in the long run. Uh, yeah, so I guess our fastest ship uh, would be the bullet. The player ship. Where's my spider? I need my spider to get in and out of this ship. There's no doors. And I'll just check how fast it goes. Uh, we do have a bunch of containers that got added that we don't necessarily need. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, actually. No, we're still way under hull stress with container stress. Oh, you're full of space rail. Okay. You can just stay here for a minute. Let's pick 
pick a random destination. Actually, why don't we go to Foenestra? As soon as this clears up. We have more construction ship. Um... I guess I'll have it anchor over there for a moment. And we'll extend this over here. should all be able to sort itself out. How much power surplus do we have? Uh, about 20. We're about a third of the way to powering our anchor. Alright, cool. Are we ready? some room in my inventory. There we go. Uh, you may go. Alright, stop, stop. Just get out of here. Stop chasing me. You're coming for a ride then. Huh. I guess they became my logistic bots. But where did they go? Oh, they're, s they're like following me still. Okay. It's fine. This is fine. Alright, so what's our speed on this thing again? 232 looks like our maximum. It's not too bad. Especially for such a small ship. What? What happened? Oh no. Oh no. That's bad. Freaking random free wires cluttering up my inventory. Yeah, so 234 is our max speed in this thing. Why are we not... Oh. I see. I think. There we go. So I think it's about time... I was going to say it's about time we move this ship. But some of the bots took it upon themselves to go up this way even though they can't reach. Or rather, they're going to try and go straight from here to there, get 99% of the way, hit a low point of energy, turn around, go all the way down here, just to get recharged, and then go back up here to place the solar panels. Efficiency personified. Alright, let's just remove these already. 
Efficiency personified. Yes, indeed. Okay. We got our solar panels at least. Any more ships on the way? Uh, yes, but they're not that close yet. I'm tracking up here, the cynical tone of it. What really disappoints me about my cynicism is that often it isn't cynical enough. They don't use the next warehouse either, they are flying to the first build or something. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's time to move this ship. We're not waiting for you. You had your chance. Oh wait, this is going to auto clamp. Let's not do that. And then... Uh, 64 tiles down this way. How many is this? 64. So that should be... Yes. Okay, perfect. Grab our scaffolding blueprint. Anchor down here on the left because the ships like to pop onto the right side. And I think we can move this one now. Why is there a single flat solar panel that hasn't been placed? What? Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Why, where is this other one coming from? Oh, it's just going back. Okay. Let's put down our superchargers. That should be more than enough. Get rid of these. And then we can move this. All I have to do is tell it to launch, actually. This one is confused. Why are you confused? And why... Oh, there it is. I was going to say, why wasn't it clamping? Alright. Scaffolding... Go. Why did this one not get placed? There we go. We might... Might just have enough scaffolding for that. Probably not. It won't be enough to finish the build in any case. ETA, two minutes to Foenestra. And... I should check how all of this is doing. Aquim ingots seem to be flowing reliably. Uh, this one. There's been a bit of a dip, but for the most part... Hmm. Science finally shot up, I noticed. Uh, yes it did. I think that was because I... Well, it was partly because I lowered the threshold to deliver it. Um, we need another 
three and a half stacks before it'll auto deliver. But if I do this right now, um, we will get teleportation done, I think. And then we'll need about 5,000 more um, Deep Space Science Pack 4. Should be a sh should be a train being scheduled in just a couple of seconds. Any minute now. Is this thing limited to one train or something? It actually is. There's no need to limit that. Are you ready? Uh, it's actually like 2,500 that we'll need. So like 12 stacks or so. Once this is scheduled. Once this is scheduled. Once this is scheduled. I don't know why it's so reluctant to schedule delivering Deep Space Science Pack 4 right now. There it goes. Alright. So that may or may not be the last delivery that we ever need. Uh, the, the one after this. All right, what else can we redesign slash design? Oh, how many ships are we, do we have here, solar panels? Uh, that's a significant number of solar panels. Since we're bottlenecking on the resource itself and we've got solar panels and scaffolding in these ships, um, and I don't know exactly how much we need, to finish. I'm just going to send these. Angulus Orbit. Go. Go. No more ships. How many ships do we have arriving? Construction ship 8 is ETA 5 minutes. And this one's going to be significantly longer than that. Well, the bots are going to take that long to settle down, at least. That's a bit weird. I think I might include Crafting Combinator in the next playthrough. I think we could save a ton of machines using something like this from early on. We could go for more Arcospheres, so that we have some uh, to play with for the Arcolink storages. We actually need 10. 10 Arcosphere Lambdas to make one Arcolink storage. That's actually kind of terrifying. Endgame cheat magic is not cheap. Uh, yeah, we could build an outpost here 
to get Arco from. Or we could get it from Galame or Sky Fragments for that matter. But we may as well build a power plant over here and potentially mine it. And there it is. The most useless research. I mean, it's probably, it's not the only research that's just a prerequisite, surely. I think, like, one of the first resources you get, uh, researchers, automation does give you something. This isn't vanilla, but I think there's something a, sort of like this that doesn't actually unlock anything. I could be wrong. Inactive machines don't use UPS, though. Uh, it's not zero. I mean, it would be a lot lower, but it's not zero. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure all of this is not UPS neutral. If only for the cost to the electric network. Fully saturated or empty belts are uh, not very UPS costly either. Fewer machines is smaller saves too, yeah. That reminds me, did I ever even finish this build? Yes I did. Okay, cool. Except, oh I forgot, that's, I temporarily made those purple chests. Oh, we got the speed modules here. Right, cool. Um, actually those were supposed to be speed plus efficiency. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go. Alright, so spiders, go back up here, please. These were su not there. These were supposed to be steel chests. Makes me wonder where the finished products ended up. Check the debug view, as long as the electric network is stable and the entities are marked inactive. Inactive entities are not part of the entity update process. Okay. I can't really see... There's... It goes off screen. How do I... how do I actually see that information? We are here. And I guess we'll anchor... over here. I don't really have anything to do here though. Right now. I guess that'll... I don't want to say that'll soon change. We, we, we need all of these solar panels done first. And it looks like we're out of scaffolding. We're keeping these guys here because they have solar panels though. Not to mention a place for the other ships to anchor. Construction ship number eight has all of the scaffolding. Construction ship number two. So 
same deal. Each of the ships has a power network. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Um, which is why I really want to focus on using fewer ships next time. But not just use fewer ships, but to have uh, kind of like a... I've shown this on the sandbox save. Um, I want to have a standardized design for the resupply section of the ship at the back. Where... and like like a standard pick up and drop off area whereby we've got a few um did i blueprint these new game here we go yeah we've got like a few designs that all fit uh like they're d designed for various milestones of which type of science pack we've got um and they all fit at the same uh, pickup slash drop off clamp area, all the way up to antimatter. Although I didn't save those yet. So that way, we don't have to keep redoing um, like pickup and drop off spots. Uh, and it would also. I guess it would make it that little bit easier to um, retire old ships. We could just have a... Rocky, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can you somehow check how many networks there are in total? I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. Train Pathfinder peak is 47.39. <laughs> That's like an entire second of update. Power menu has a list of networks. Uh, power menu. Power menu. Power menu. List of networks. Or is this a different screen? I imagine. Oops. Alternative view on the production tab. Buildings? I don't think that's right. Alternative view on the production tab. Rarely use it, so I don't know for sure. Okay. Alright, um, I guess I'll try and think of something else to design in the meantime. There's, it's also kind of highlighting how much stuff I am happy with, uh, the designs that we settled on this playthrough, that I don't feel like redesigning them. I mean, I'll certainly, instead of like stealing my own blueprint I'll do them again from scratch and maybe improve on them a little bit but like this for example this is basically perfect um the next playthrough will have bigger containers so that'll be a bit neater you can pretty much have one network per ship and planet so it should be easy to count Uh, I've got a lot of separate networks, though, like on planet. Especially when we had the defensive walls. Um, because... Let's see. Uh, because we were using accumulator charge to detect when there's biters. Another way to do it would be to detect uh, fluid count dropping from a container. That circuit's a little complicated, but nothing too bad. 
and of course it would be pretty easy to detect based on inserting ammo, but then you have to have the gun turrets close. And the gun turrets have poor range and poor health. Uh, even, no matter how high tech you, you get, uh, gun turrets only have 400 hit points. Which is not great. Landing ships is also quite UPS intensive. That only happens for a moment though. Like, overall it's negligible. Egg? Egg. The real treaty? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are we still waiting on a ship here? Feels like it's been forever. Are these ships not using antimatter somehow? Negligible until you have hundreds of ships. Yeah, but it's not like they're taking off and landing like every moment, even with hundreds of them. And thank you for the follow. Matrim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Using ships for long range transport is one thing, but you don't want them going short trips. Well, yeah, we do have a lot of ships that wouldn't exist if we had the space elevator. Um, like, literally all of these ones. But just to get stuff to and from Nalvis orbit. Tim Z, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, it's going to be a lot less of a headache getting stuff to and from orbit, not having to do this stuff. I also, uh, I, I also want to be sure of making it, I don't know how I would go about it really. I want to make it less of a hassle to get rid of old like cargo rockets, for instance. Just having the train networks connected via... Um, via the space elevator is going to be huge, though. It almost makes me want to use vanilla trains. Almost. I mean, we can definitely just use vanilla trains um, to transport items through the space elevator and then have LTN trains do the rest. May I ask how you create interstellar travel data? Yeah, sure. So, oh. Oh, that's something we can do. Oh, I still haven't figured out how to do that. Alright, we have a mission. Um, so, I don't know how this thing managed to run out of heat, but this is our interstellar travel data ship. Um, basically, it has to run the cheaper, the power cheaper recipe for the Nexus. Um, while it is in interstellar space. Uh, and the faster it goes, the more data it produces, and the more power it uses. Um, so basically, make spaceship, have Nexus, go travel in deep space, and come back with interstellar travel data. Um, I'm going to need... Oh! Oh, that is very, very lucky. I happen to have one antimatter reactor on me. Okay, um, let me just create some room in my inventory here. I'm going to go steal a little bit of antimatter canister. One stack should be more than enough. And 
what do we call it? Nexus Prime. Got antimatter fuel for it too. Yes, indeed. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just uh, land myself on this ship. I'll remove this temporarily. Put in a antimatter reactor. I guess we just have to remove... Yeah, we'll have to remove a laser turret and a shield projector. Uh, put in just one antimatter reactor here, dump some fuel in it, and we'll heat this thing up so it can go back home. I don't know how this happened because we had everything measured out. Um, we... It gets back to Nalva's orbit, there's a timer, it makes sure that it stays there long enough to get 10,000 degrees of heat. Oh no, I think I do realize how this happened. Um... No? No, this is our beam. This is the one that resupplies that ship with heat. Hmm. I... Was it this one? Maybe they were both pointed at that ship and then I borrowed this and forgot that I was stealing it from that ship. To power Hagen? That could have been what happened. We'll find out when we get the ship back home. Why not just swap out the beam receiver? Uh, it'll just lose heat if I do that. Space elevator, that's a game changer. Yes, indeed. I only just learned about it because you were talking about it. Earlier playthrough, I used cargo rockets. Didn't get into spaceships, could have, but daunting prospect. Yeah. One of the reasons why this playthrough is so long is because with spaceships, for example, I would take the time to build like an empire of spaceships um, at a relatively low tech level. Whereas on a second playthrough, you know, been there, done that, seen that, let's get to antimatter as quickly as possible, for example. And I'm not going to build, like, 700 ion ships um, that I then have to get rid of later for UPS reasons. Alright, what's our ETA? 1 minute 26. Where even are we? I guess coming from Foenestra, uh, we're pretty much just going to appear on top of our target sooner or later, maybe? We've got our third ship here, fantastic. Let's get cracking. Solar panels go burr. Uh, and we need 4x5. Oh, not counting... What do we got here? 15 gigawatts? So we need, like... Probably... 23... Of these squares. Empire of Spaceships, good name for a mod. Perhaps another route to winning. Yeah. Yeah, I built... I mean, let's look at how many spaceships we've got. Um, and try and ignore the shuttles. How do I... Wait, what? Include spaceships. Uh, 
Okay, so we want it to look like this. Uh, this is all of our spaceships. We've got like eight construction ships. Uh, often about eight ships, like ion ships, to go back and forth to collect something like 80 or 90 core fragments per second from our outposts. Good day, Shack Cat. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hughes Mike, good to see you again also. We're not going to need anywhere near as many ships uh, by taking advantage of Foenestra as well. Just using it as a stop-off point to shorten the, uh, shorten the distance. I think I'm going to rework how I do cargo rockets instead of training items to the rocket. I attach a huge build directly and train the rocket parts. That makes sense. Definitely. Oh, I forgot about this ship. Where even is this ship? It's at Alvis Orbit. Uh, we could rework this a little bit just for fun. How about... Uh, where am I going to put it? Hmm. I'll need water. We've got water here. So... It's going to take up way too much space. I did think about this earlier. Um... We can use a chemical plant or a biochemical facility to turn steam back into water, but without getting the benefit of power from this. Um, but for a relatively small ship, it's not going to be a net positive. Um... I mean, if we do a biochemical facility... Whoops. Oh, we're here. Let's do this first. We'll get it started. It'll take a little bit of time. Alright, so... Can we pick a dolly this? We actually can. Not that there's room. Reactor goes here. Reactor fuel goes here. Uh, we lost like 50 degrees Celsius because this was cold to start with. I don't want to burn all of our antimatter stream recklessly. Let's see how much this, how much heat this gives us. Okay, uh, so I was going to do biochemical facility. Just throw that down somewhere. If we put speed modules in it, tier 6. We can turn any temperature of steam... Over 3,000 per second. Um, turn that back into water. So if these were all going full tilt, which they don't quite. Um, 500 degrees. To, yeah, just one of these. Could easily handle all the 500 degree steam. Instead of all of those condenser turbines which give us a negligible amount of power compared to the high temp turbine generators. So we could definitely save some hull stress that way. However, on a smaller ship where we've only got one high temp turbine generator, um, it actually makes no sense. Uh, and we can't use a chemical plant, unfortunately. 
So this is actually the best way to get rid of that 500 degree steam. So no notes, I think. Yeah, I think this is more or less as good as a steamship gets. We have stored steam for input. We need lots of room for water for output. We're not going to try and re, uh, recycle it. That's pretty much it. Oh, and it's not viable until you have 5,000 degree steam. Unless you want to go to the trouble of making 900 to 1,000 degree steam, which there's no direct recipe for. You actually just have to mix different temperatures. You can't measure the temperatures. Um, and if it goes above 1,000 degrees, it doesn't work with the condenser turbine. So that's fun. I guess we could try and we could try and do a build that does exactly that reliably. Uh let's see how our ship is doing. Oh wow, it's actually taking longer to warm up than I would have thought. Uh So we've used like half no, we've used one and a half antimatter canisters, and we've only gained, like, uh, 35 degrees-ish. Hmm. It's actually going to take quite a few antimatter canisters to get enough heat to go home. Kind of does sound kind of fun. Yeah, let's see. The, the thing that'll make this possible or not is do we have a way to get a precise amount of each type of steam so that we can mix them uh, to get the right temperature? There's only... The only ways I can think of to make 5k steam... There's the electric boiler, which is really slow. It's it's much better to do the beam receiver. But do we have the power to spare over here? I don't think so. Uh, we've actually got like 12 gigawatts we can spare. Do we have any... Oh, we do. Okay. I should include some scaffolding over here next time. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely down another one of these. Um, do I need to expand this out a bit? Not really. Actually, why don't I build it here for the moment? Beam receiver. So we're going to use that for the heat to get... I guess we could use it for the heat to get both... Uh, 5,000 and 500 degree steam. So we need a high temp... Uh, I also kind of want to figure out a design where we don't need this high tech, but that's just use electric boiler. So that's not really a complicated step. So we got our heat, we got this thing that will make 5,000 degree steam, this thing will make 500 degree steam, and then we have to mix them precisely. Um, which pumps won't do. Uh, I was hoping 
I don't think there is a way to do it. If there was something like how we can turn ice into exactly 100 water, but for steam. Oh. Oh. I think I just answered it right then and there. Um, so we have... We have a biochemical facility that makes water. We have a biochemical facility that makes water from ice. And we put ice in with inserters and we get a precision amount of fluid. You can use, you can with the boiler. Uh, I don't think we can precisely control that with the boiler. I don't think there's enough recipes available to make a system that's self-balancing. What if you ran pumps on a clock in the right proportions? The pumps are imprecise. That's the problem. You get rounding errors for fluid transfers. Exactly. But with this... With this, we can get a precise mix. Uh, so we're going to have, basically, requester chests for ice. And heat goes here. Let's uh, all... We're going to wait until that gets up to heat, of course. But yeah, we can basically have circuit-controlled single-stack... Uh, sorry, stack size 1 inserters. Recipe is ice becomes water. And then we have to figure out our ratio. Uh... We don't have a way to use heat like this to make... I guess we could also use an electric boiler this way. We could have colder steam, which might make it a bit easier. Do we have a boiler here? I don't think so. Let's rescue our ship and run back there and we can like handcraft a boiler. We are back to 5,000 degrees, just barely. Still got 45. Oops. Okay, we're still filling up on hot steam. Fantastic. Won't run space efficiently, but it'd do the job. You could use extra turbines as temp detectors and let through extra high temp steam if it turns off. I don't understand. So the recipe won't be much more for you. Now the idea the idea that I have here is to make a precise temperature of steam to begin with. So basically, we figure out some... Let, let's say we're doing 500 and 5,000. Um, if we did 100 of each, what temperature would it equalize to? I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Would it be exactly in between those two temperatures, or... Might have to run the experiment to find out. And yeah, it might be easier to make... Um... Like, 100 degree steam. Can we even do that? 165, 500, 5 a yeah no it starts at 165 doesn't it no wait electric boiler steam 100 degrees 
So that'd, that'd be a bit cooler to start with. It, wouldn't, it doesn't take much energy to do that either. But yeah. So we could make... Hmm. The electric boiler lets us get 5k steam pretty early, right? Yeah, there it is. Technology's electric boiler. Uh, it takes a lot of time and energy, of course. But... We could actually make... Oh, this is, this is actually kind of exciting. We could have a spaceship. We could have the technology... The moment we have spaceships, we could be using 900 degree steam uh, in condenser turbines, which give us basically twice as much power, half as many condenser turbines, uh, and we can effectively run it off electricity indirectly, instead of having like a nuclear reactor or two on every spaceship. We can just supply it with X temperature steam, like somewhere between 900 and 1000, uh, stored like so. I think we could significantly cut down on the size of the spaceship with this. And we would also have, kind of like how I like the um, energy beam receiver ships. Uh, we could have all of our spaceships powered by totally renewable energy. Well, I mean, I know everything's infinite with coal mining, but I mean, we don't have to cart a resource around. Uh, unless you count water or steam. The steam is the battery for our spaceships, and we could do this as soon as we unlock spaceships. Where do you get the power from, though? Uh, what do you mean? You can fill them up on either end with a single power source? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have your solar power or whatever. Uh, let's say when we drop stuff off at Nalvis or something. We just fill up the input steam and get rid of the output water. Yeah, the steam is the battery. Exactly. It's actually, like, the most effective battery in the game. Uh, except maybe for 0 0.5 version energy beam receiver. That can hold an awful lot of energy. But, like, um, a, a 25k storage tank of 5,000 degree steam is actually a lot of energy. Um, and to a lesser extent, a thousand degree steam. So why aren't you putting 5k temp steam in there and call it done? Uh, we need... We, I've, I've done this already. So we need a high temp turbine generator to take advantage of the 5000 degree steam. Um, that's pretty high tech. Unfortunately... If you put 5,000 degree steam into a condenser turbine, it just doesn't work. Um, if it goes over 1,000 degrees, it doesn't work. Which, uh, yeah, it's a bit finicky. Um, and there's no direct recipe to make steam that's 900 to 1,000 degrees. So that's why we're trying to figure out how to do it consistently. Didn't know it had an upper hard limit. Yeah. The first thing I tried when I wanted to make a steam-powered ship was just give it 5k steam. You don't really need the water back. I mean, we can't automatically get rid of it unless we just store it and then when the ship lands we output it. Oh, um, I guess we can waste power to delete it. Um, but that's like... 
I mean, I guess we would gain container stress, but it's not a whole lot. The fluid containers aren't that expensive. Um, what's the recipe called again? Let me just find it down here. You could turn it back to water. Yeah, but then you need a reactor to make it useful. Um, like you can either turn it into water, store it, and get rid of it when the ship stops. Or you need a reactor, and that sort of defeats the whole point of the exercise. It's only 0.37 seconds. It's actually the same amount of energy uh, to make 100 degree steam as to get rid of the water. And you can't put modules on this or anything, so... That is 264.7 water per second we could get rid of. Um, versus... Uh, it's 80. It's basically 80 per second. Water that comes out of the condenser turbines. So what's that? That's three condenser turbines per... Um, per electric boiler. So we'd need like two, maybe, uh, probably two of these on a ship, or three. Um, I think I would rather just store the water. In the pre-mixing phase, I mean, so it's over and done with at the space station. Wait, what? No other turbine option that supports 900 degree steam, but doesn't recycle water? No. The turbine, you don't set the recipe on a turbine, it just does its thing based on the input. I was wondering about using 500 degree steam with steam turbines early-ish game. Uh, do you mean... Oh, you did you mean 5000? Ship is going to end up pretty big with all these things. No, I think it's going to be smaller. Because, okay, so here is, here is a design that we might use in a future playthrough that actually has enough power to support two ion engines. Um, because we're using 500 degree steam, uh, we actually need eight condenser turbines, but we could cut that in half if we're using 900 plus degree steam. Uh, and we would also not need the reactors, we just swap that out. But we wouldn't need the reactors, heat pipe, or heat exchangers. We just swap that out for some storage tanks. Uh, and you don't need the container chests to support the reactors, so the uh, the storage tanks for the steam are pretty much going to be better than free. If you made the steam mixer on the ship. Oh, right, yeah. I was wondering about using that ship design with just 500 degrees, not 5,000, but not viable. You just don't get the uh, the extra power because condenser turbines. Uh, if you if you use 900 plus degree steam, uh, you get almost double the power compared to 500. It's a pretty big deal. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I have half a mind to just abandon this and come back to it. I might do that. We'll just... We'll just donate an entire stack of antimatter canister, potentially, to get this thing warmed up so it can come back home. Okay. Uh, why don't we board our player ship?
Wait, what? Okay. And let's head back to Nervous Orbit. We can get inside. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I need to tell this thing to stop. Um, let's see. Target is Nervous Orbit. Stop. We'll come back to this one. Or maybe I'll just tell it to go home when it's got enough heat, and I'll tell it to move slowly, so that missing defenses don't matter. You thought you needed jumpstart cables, but should have brought the nuclear reactor with you? I mean, the reactor was the jumpstart cables. Alright, I'm kind of excited to play with uh, getting this lower temperature steam working. And you know what, I think I think we will do it with electric boilers, partly because I don't want to wait for this to heat up, but more to the point, I want to design it as low tech as possible, because that's kind of... Apart from steamships are cool, um, that's kind of half the point of this design, is getting a much higher power density ship uh, as low tech as possible. Uh, how's our other project going? Oh. Yeah, I've neglected you. Okay. Um, why don't we put this here already? I'm tempted to get a bit lazy here and just go around our ships, but no, it's fine. Um, let's go with this. Now I fiddled with it a long time ago, never got it to power my outpost for more than an hour. How were you making the steam? I think, as far as I can think of, the only way to do it precisely is with uh, ice to water controlled by inserters. Using electric boiler, yeah. Those uh, those inaccuracies are just going to add up, and you're eventually going to get steam that is not in the temperature range. Why not use tier three solar panels? Should have should have more than enough naquin by now. Nope. Um, the scale. It, it's a uh, sixteen naquin plate to upgrade each flat solar panel, and you only get double. Um, I, we did the math. You you need, let's see. So, Naquium, not Naquium, uh, we've gone past the point because we've used so many, but up to a point, like, Holmium solar panels are basically free at this point compared to anything Naquium. Um, but we need... 255 times 12, 3 gigawatts, uh, we need basically 20 blocks of 255, uh, 5,100 flat solar panels to make sure we've got more than enough to support the anchor. We could cut that number in half. So we have 2,550, 
multiply that by 16 Naquium plates, and we're looking at 40,800 Naquium plates for each, uh, for each anchor. Or to put it another way, Uh, to put it another way, several hours of Naquium Plate. About 13 hours or so. Yeah, no, I think I'll just spam Holmium. I feel Naquium is basically for free right now basically free for me. How, how much Naquium are you mining? We're, we're only doing four belts of Naquium. <laughs> only. If I'd used Foenestra the way I planned to next time, we could definitely go signif uh, significantly faster. 12k per minute for plates. Yeah. So quad damage. That's still multiple hours um, to support each uh, each anchor just for Naquium. All right, let's tidy this up and these. And this. Wait, that can stay. Not at that point yet? Yeah. I mean, if you have it all stored, by all means. Something else I would like to do different next time is start mining Naquium early. Early, you know what I mean. As early as possible. Um, so that we have a, a, a store of it by the time we're doing, doing things with it. Maybe I will change my mind, but I am lazy and impatient when it comes to construction. Yeah, fair enough. The fiddling that we have to do... I mean, I could just have... I could include roboports in these builds and just leave them there, but I hate that. Um, we could use radar construction pylons and just spam this stuff, but the bots would take 10,000 years. Um, because of the recharging bottleneck. It's a whole thing. Let's anchor our ships down here. Launch, 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 and furthermore, launch. And then set the lamp settings. Wait, what? Oh, oh no. Okay. All right. I see how it is. Now we can set their clamp settings again. I hope we've got enough solar panels and stuff. So we don't have to make one more trip. Alright. Let's go. And 
back to you. It's actually 2 minutes 20 to now this orbit. Hey, Seifika. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders. How's your stream today? I noticed a while ago just how much robot speed helps with UPS. When they move faster, they get their job done quicker and go vacant again. Crazy enough, I upgraded it to 15 for 200k signs. Nice. Hey, 3 Aru. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Both a radar and an existing viewer. Yes, indeed. I recognize you. I spent a lot of time to make one thing, and then it turns out I don't need it yet. Perfect. I mean, I was already watching her. Yeah, perfect stream, indeed. I mean, what is Factorio for if not designing things? Maybe I should design this on the ground first? Doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got a bunch of, we've got a bunch of room down here that's in range of robot network. And I could arrange water as well. Why don't we just do it here? That might make more sense. Alright, let's do a request uh, for water. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think this goes here. Yes, indeed. And connect like so. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 100 degree steam, and we're going to have 5,000 degree steam. Can I pick a dollar of these? Cannot be rotated. Oops. Uh, how about... Hmm. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four. And then I can move those around how I like. Our cooling storage. Yes, indeed. Uh, we need some chem plants. One of each. Requester chests. For ice. And... I don't know, fast inserter. We're gonna need some combinators and stuff as well, but pretty close to them all. Alright, so one of these is gonna make 100 degrees steam. The other's gonna make 5,000 degrees steam. We're going to melt ice in order to make water. Uh, purely so that we can get a precise amount of water. And we're going to circuit control this so that we get an exact amount for each type of steam. Um, and then we're going to mix them and we're going to see what temperature we get. Something like this, perhaps? Wait, why did I summon water here? That's like the opposite of what we need to do. Okay, um, can we just... Is it too late to stop the water train from... There's gonna be a random water train somewhere. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, no. Uh, I know where it would be picking up from. Here it is. 
think. No, you've already finished your job. Uh, this one is picking up. And it was going here. Okay, that's actually fine. What about... Uh, I don't even know at this point. Oh, that was the train. There it is. Back to the depot with you. Does it have water already? No, I lost track of it. What? Mm. I hope we just didn't send a water train back to the depot. There it is. Caught the culprit. Alright, tell you what, you can drop off water here instead. I might have to force it to pick up the water though. Alright, back to the build. So we need water ice. We don't have any in the mall, apparently. Uh, we could do a train delivery for that. I think I could set this up so that short trains... Yeah, we already did that. Alright, cool. Where's our mall? Here it is. Okay, so... Passive provider. That's not going to reach, is it? You missed giving the water train a condition to unload. Uh oh. Oh, it did unload. Huh. Well, that was... Wait. That was a different... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. That's why we made these depots like that. <laughs> so this is now a provider station. Maybe we'll get to witness uh, what I couldn't remember or figure out. The problem of why this doesn't actually work. So it's supposed to have turned from a depot into a provider station now. So now we've got water. Now we've got a train coming to pick up this water. I don't really want to take my eyes off it. Oh, here we go. Uh, what are you doing? Picking up water. Okay. Uh, this is probably the problem that I pointed out earlier. No? What? Why does this train think... Oh, it thinks it's at the depot. Wait, what? Oh, that's even worse. If a train can come here thinking it's stopping at the depot um, after we've turned this into a provider station, we can't dynamically change the name of the station. Huh. I think we actually, if we're going to have something like this, we actually have to have a system like this where we pump the water away to a different station. Or possibly if we had... Where did it go? Uh, possibly if we had like another train stop here and line it up so that 
one station gets the output water, one station gets the input water. Or... That might be a better way to go about it. Could probably do a much simpler build to make that happen as well. Well, let vanilla trains handle fluids so they don't screw it up. But then you've got... Then you have to do the dance of, like, how many water trains do I need? How many light oil trains do I need? And so on. Alright. Uh, do we have ice? No, we have, didn't finish this yet. Uh, let's see. Requester... Good luck, that sounds like a lot of work. Just turn on auto-delete. But then you waste fluid. And you don't get to do a cool, complicated build. Uh, let's check in on... Our, the last... Uh, the last of our solar builds. Oops. And we're needing uh, 5 plus 15, about 20 gigawatts. This is about 12. So we probably need like three more blocks after this. I should have put it just far away enough so that we could fit another one like this. I'll let LTN be cheaty and delete fluids at the depot. Yeah, I just I, I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, I guess I don't really need to physically be there since I figured out we should do the uh the steam build down here. All right, so we need. Uh, water ice. Uh, short train. Quest stack threshold. 40. And go. Now then, what's our counting machine going to look like for the combinators to control input of different temperatures of steam? I also have to account for how much longer it takes um, to get the 5k steam. We get 4.5 per second versus 240, 264 per second. Hmm. Hmm. We can't put modules on this or anything. 22.15 seconds crafting time. Uh, but I think we're going to need a lot more... I think we're going to need a lot more uh, 100 degree steam than we need 5k steam. Like, probably about five times as much to make it about a thousand degrees. Let's just do some manual counting of each, um, of each temperature and see what we get. Time to start filling out a spreadsheet. And I'll just use this notepad since that's a bit easier for the moment. Alright, where's our ice? Where is our ice? 
my demand service. We've got all of it here. Provide stack threshold 160, just means how much we have to have. We've got tons of it. Short trains and long trains are permitted. Um, max train 6. There should be no hesitation whatsoever in requesting a train for ice. Oh, wait. Request? Hold on. Negative 4,000. That's not enough. It's 200 times 40. 8,000. Well, there's your problem. If you've balanced it with the inserters, then just add boilers until they keep up. Yeah, definitely. Um, but first we have to determine the ratio. We'll worry about controlling the inserters after that. So I definitely want stack size 1. And can you give an estimation as of how much power the Nexus drains for interstellar science? Uh, at, let's say, 200 speed. Uh, I believe it's 2 gigawatts. Yeah, I think it's 1 gigawatt per 100 speed, if I recall correctly. Um, if we look at our Nexus ship, we've got... Oh, this is actually way more power than we need, because I wanted it to be symmetrical. Uh, this could do 4 gigawatts. Uh, what was the max speed on this thing? I actually have no idea. Oh, 185, there it is still. So, less than 2 gigawatts uh, for this one. Thank you, you're welcome. Wait, if this is less than 2 gigawatts, then we should only have like 2 high temp turbine generators here. We could make this significantly smaller. Assuming fluid mechanics aren't too much of a problem. Alright. Are we getting our ice? Yes, we are. Fantastic. I didn't name the station, so I have no idea where our train is. There it is. Might be close to a victory ship then? I don't think so. The minimum, if you imagine that nothing but the Nexus consumes power, the minimum that you need for a victory ship is 6.25 gigawatts. Um, in other words, you need seven high temp turbine generators. Um, we only have four on that ship. I mean, we would only have two if we were doing, if we were being a bit more efficient. We got the Nexus, yeah. The Nexus is pretty chunky. Alright, can we hurry up with the ice, please? Uh, we really do, don't need that much all at once, just go. And let's check on our solar build. Oops. I guess we can go ahead and fill this much out as well. They're actually so close to... You know what? Let's just do this. If 
They're just barely going to have to move back a bit to finish the job. Oh. Oh no. This is going to be a slaughter. Oh, the humanity. All the bot recharge. Oops, indeed. We'll come back to that. Alright, so we got our ice. Uh, let's see what we get. Why don't I... Oops. Yeah, why don't I just put 100... Um... 500 degree steam in. And we'll record the temperature as we add 100, 200, 300, and so on. Uh, 100 degree steam. So let's see. 200 joules per degree Celsius, except 15 is like zero. <laughs> Well, no, it's more like 500, or whatever temperature we're consuming it is like zero degrees. No, that's not how that works. That's like heat from the heat pipes. Let's say it's a thousand degrees. Um... Two hundred thousand joules. All right, what do we got? Five thousand degrees steam. Let's put in one bit. Oh, the temperatures. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the temperature varies across. across the containers it's a lot actually I think we need to pump it hmm let's get rid of this and actually why don't we just use one container that's gonna be most representative Wait, what the? Oh, I got it. I accidentally made it pick up that water. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we've got 5k steam times 100 coming in, and 100. Exactly 100, 100 degree water. You gotta make like 50k before it starts to equalize. Yeah, if we have just the one container, it should equalize like instantly. Alright, so first data point. Five thousand, one times 5,000, zero times 100 equals 5,000. It's three containers since the boiler also counts. Um, this will eject the fluid like really, really quickly. Oh, what do we got? 2550 degrees. Uh, that is dropping really fast. All right, one more. Whoops. Seventeen thirty three point three three. I should use a yellow inserter so we don't panic and put in too much. Uh, 
next time. Uh, 1325.0. And I think this will be the last one. 1080. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have to go below 1000. Or 1000 at the most. Condenser turbine. Uh, I haven't made such a layout here that we can just put that straight in. Hmm. It's fine. Uh, so this is 1080. We've gone from 5k to 2550 to 1733 to 1325 to 1080. And 916.67. That's going to have to be it. I think the condenser turbine gives us 1062, 10.62 megawatts, um, no matter what exact temperature it is, as long as it's in that temperature range. So 916.67. And it was two, three, four, five. One to five. Okay. And let's just confirm that this will consume that. I'd aim for 700. If it's below 500, uh, 900, we won't get the, the bonus power. can't really see how much power this is producing, but the fact that it's consuming tells me... Oh, it outputs it as 900 for the internal. Yeah, well, that's a pretty big hint that it's working. The megawatt output scales line linearly with temperature. Uh, do you mean it actually does give you bonus power per degree? I don't think it does. I mean, it probably should, but... Alright, so that's it. Um, one to five. Now, how do we decide to... Also, how... How many of these would it take? We can't really just have more electric boilers making 5k steam. Um, I guess we can. Because this is so slow... Let's see, 246. This is literally 264.71 over 4.5135. Uh, 58.65 times faster. Take 900 or whatever temp you make. Minus 15 and multiply. We can calculate it from the joules per degrees load info. Get the inserters to ratio, then you can worry about the boiler count. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Alright, so how do we get the inserters to ratio? The main thing is they have to. Hmm. Oh, it's easy, actually. Uh, let's put this here. And... 
we're gonna have read hand contents pulse we're gonna have a memory cell uh, I think we can just say modulus 5 I think we actually learned that trick just yesterday. Um, can I make this a... Oh, we could also... We could use a stack inserter with stack size 5, however... Then we have to trust that there's enough ice here. Okay, there's a couple of ways we could do it. Let's explore both of them. So we're going to go... Uh, modulus. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, this is not an arithmetic tab. Could you stop? Chrono, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Modulus 5. Output each. Uh, stack size one. Read hand contents pulse. Let's say no condition for now. So this has a count of one. Wait, isn't it the other way around? We need to put in one five K for every five of the others. Well, let's pretend the one on the right is the cold one at the moment. Um, so let's go two, three, four, five. All right, so when it should be five, it's zero. If I get a red wire from this and say equals one, what the? That doesn't seem right. when there are no inputs. Alright, let's just say ice equals one. Why is it... Why is it reading every time? Oh, because this takes one more tick. Oh, also I'm not linking this. That's probably why. Let's have count. I think with this... Oh, no, it's working. I was going to say, I think with the signal timing, that's not actually going to work, but it is. So that's number five. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Number one. Okay, so that works except that it's not robust against resources missing. Um, so I'm a little bit sketchy about that one. The other solution I had in mind is also a bit simpler. Have the slower one drive the clock in case it backs up. Would output being full also be problematic? Uh, could do. Yes, yes it would. So that's something else to consider. Uh, but let's solve one problem at a time. 
Um, why don't we have on the cold side a stack inserter, stack size five. On the hot side, stack size one. And I kind of accidentally flipped those, so let's keep it consistent. Whoa. Alright, so stack size five. Um, I could set it... No, I was going to say I could set it so that we only get exactly five ice in here and one in here, but we can't do that directly with the requester chests. Because the bots tend to oversupply. So we would have to have another chest here and stack size one. Just put a got to put a condition on the right inserter and also pulse on the left one, then you can get them to sync. How did it blow? Uh, the bot that was um, bot attrition. If you have too many, if you have more than fifty logistic bots, they may explode. Just a anti-bot spam feature of. Uh, space exploration, I guess, that doesn't really add up to much except having to resupply bots. Alright, we're gonna do stack size one. Um, red wire. Water, ice. Uh, equals zero. Less than five. Can we just get rid of that for a sec? Alright, so we've got exactly five and one. Uh, and then we can set this to stack size one. Not that it matters. Uh, this to stack size five. Not that it matters, I guess. And... Uh, water ice equals... Six on both of these and connect it to these two chests. So once those purples are in place, we should see that these two stay synced up. Five and one. Seems good. We also have to smuggle one extra condition onto these. Uh, we can easily do that with something like ice actually has to equal seven and we have a constant combinator or something giving a signal of one ice uh, if the condition is met that we want to swing these. And if you block one chest, uh, what do you mean block? Oh, we're not going to be using the chests for this. This is just, um, this is just for testing purposes. All right, I think now is a good time to take a little break, actually. Uh, let's set up some words on the stream. Actually, before I do, um, let's check on our solar stuff. I meant to test backing up. Oh, right, good point. Alright, let's go... We need... Oh, I need to make all of these take off again. Move them back a bit. Why didn't these ones take off? 
Oh, they're still taking off. Okay. Alright, so this is going to go about here. And one of these ships is not like the others. This is fine. That's the last one. And... Superchargers. And now we can remove these ones. And these ones. And finally queue up some scaffolding. All right, cool. Let's get some words on string. Uh, I'm going to take a little break back in a few minutes. Anyone know a trick to get loaders to work? Uh, not really. No, sorry. All right. In about 30 seconds, we're going to start some words on string again. Uh, I'm going to take a break for a few minutes. Good luck and have fun. My bad, there's the words.
Okay. Continue at the end of this round. Fantastic. Uh, where are we at with words? Oh, fantastic. Nice. Uh, level 13. Ooh. Gotta remember to finish that tonight before I end the stream. Uh, so, we are headed for Foenestra. And that is because... we've done it. Uh, we've got... all of the power that we require... to run our dimensional anchors. And if we look at Foenestra right now, there it is. All of the anchors are active. Um, I don't know if I even need to physically be here for this. I guess we can start playing with it while I'm still on the way. Um, but here goes. We'll start firing up the mobile components. Number one. Oh, it does a thing after that. Number two. Number three. Ducks for cover. Indeed. Number four. Um, we've still got plenty of antimatter, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Number five. We want to see Daniel Jackson. Number six. Number seven. And here's the big one. Number eight. Now what? Oh. Oh. And then? It's getting bigger. It's full of stars. It plays Rickroll. <laughs> That's like what, the ending of Spore? Analysis of distortion vector. The distortion is unstable. The distortion vector does not lead anywhere. Okay, I assume we need to try another address. Can I just... Do I need to, like, unclamp all of these first? I think we need to... How about if I press stop? Like, oh. And now it's going to reboot. At least, I think it's going to reboot. Star Wars, indeed. Revan, good to see you again. Lanarian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, we can either brute force, just try every combination here. 
or we can look for clues as to an address to put in. Let's try this. We're just like dialing random numbers in the, not even the phone book. The pictures you took? Yeah, I was thinking about that. See who picks up. Alright, uh, let me look up one of those images. We've got... The most recent one we did was Lothar. With the, like, Y stick figure thing. I think that's the one we just tried. No, that one's different. Oh, this is Lothar. This this Y stick figure, as uh, Y stick figure thingy right here. The surrounding symbols are well. There's nine of them. Wait, is it actually the nine symbols that we need? Okay, let's try the nine symbols. At the bottom middle. We need, like, this five-pointed crown thing. It's practically a rotary phone? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Can you lock in sy symbols and then move the circle? No, we have to move it first. So if you lock one symbol, then rotate... Yeah, no. Okay, so... Where's the five-pointed star? Here it is. This is the one at the bottom. Um, with Lothar. We'll try that. So we need to go... Is it right? Yes. Incoming! Is it gonna... It, it does have momentum. Okay. 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 And stop. Alright, let's try this. Actually, I wonder if looking at Lothar... So on the left of that is this weird stick figure thing. It's definitely not that, so I don't get the intuition that this one's going to work. Uh, is that it? That might be the same symbol I was just talking about. Is that the same symbol twice? Whatever, let's just try it. Do any of the symbols repeat? Can you lock in and move afterwards? No, you can't move it after locking it in. Sheep say met, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Actually, let me try something. If you actually can... Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, okay, I'm not there yet. Um, okay, okay. Uh, something is coming through the portal. It doesn't seem to be interested in my machines, at least. Uh, I was not expecting this. And I don't know our ETA before we get to Foenestra. Hmm. 
ETA too late. <laughs> they're not really doing anything. Maybe they're friendly. Delivery cannon or glaive? No, they're not they're not doing anything. It's probably fine. Oh, they're they're getting less blue. Or is it just because they're up here? There isn't actually like an effect on them, it's just this blue thing in front of them. Friendly for sure, yeah. Um Well this is a little bit awkward. They're getting more, yeah. I mean it, it's still it's still not gonna be a challenge for the power armor that I've got. Uh, we're not going to need Robocourse. This is fine. They're getting rather dense, though. Close the gate? What for? Alright, fine. Let's... Shut that down, see what happens. Oh, now it works without power? Uh-huh. Oh, I think we turned off pollution as well, just to save UPS. That might be why they're not attacking. Are we there yet? I didn't think there would actually be a reason for me to physically be there. I could put some defenses in the spider as well. I wonder if the pollution might be saving you now. Would be a bit cheaty if that was the case. Yeah. I mean, they probably wouldn't do that much damage, to be honest, by the time I get there. They don't tend to attack stuff like this. This could be the start of a new comedy series, Biters in Space. Uh... So I could give the spider some of my shields, a portable fusion reactor, and a bunch of lasers. I don't think it would really help. I mean, this is a lot of lasers already. Can the pollution be turned back on mid-game? I don't think so. I mean, not in real time, not without quitting. Uh, kind of weird how they're full bright. In the darkness of Foenestra. Spatial distortion. Oh, does this finish when we get to 10,000? Is that how that works? They're phosphorescent? It's part of the law. Indeed. Alright, I think we're almost there. 9, 7... 9, 800... 9, 900... And... Go. Let's not anchor on top of the biters. That might be a little bit uncomfortable. I think I heard you used to be able to squish them by doing that. Tesla gun is very handy here. 
Not to mention, um, I guess the ice gun as well. But really, the Tesla gun is going to be enough. This isn't even fair. I think the only thing that got damaged was ice. Oh wait, there's some pipes over here that need repairs. Um... What a mess. Sorry, wrong number. Alright. So let's power it up again. Honestly, what a mess. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven things on the outside. But there's only eight selector things. Hmm. Telemarketers. <laughs> Tick Bonnie. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try... Moving this over... One... I can't even see for all the biters. Uh, I'm literally not going to be able to see what we're selecting here. But I do want to try to do what people were saying before, where we like select this and then move this. It. Oh, wait, what? Okay, so it saves whatever was there. So we can do a sort of dialing thing. But like, all of the addresses, if you like, have 11, 11 symbols around a central symbol. And we've got 8. So what the hell do we do with that? What a phone, there's like 40 possible digits. Yeah, what, but what are we supposed to do with this? Maybe one, two, three, four, no. One, two, mm. That's a Stargate if ever I saw one, indeed. Yeah, I'm looking at the screenshots from the Mysterious Structures, and there just isn't the right number of symbols to do something with this. Hmm... I don't suppose any of the addresses, if we just rotate it, are going to be good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And probably a middle one might be relevant. How do I pick eight out of eleven of these symbols? The 
the middle is likely just a walking platform. Yeah. Not actually a selector. But how do I look at the 11 symbols surrounding it and say those 8 are what I need to select? I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing like a good pattern or anything. There are three that are different slash grouped differently. I honestly have no idea. Hmm. There's so many possibilities, like so many combinations that we could try. Burgers and fries, morning. I don't even know what to try at random here. 64 to the 8th combination, so guessing is a bit inefficient. Yes, indeed. Spybot, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There are quite a few things connected to in this puzzle. What if I just go clockwise from some point from one of these? Let's look at Lothar again. Um, so this symbol right here is the one in the middle. No, that's the wrong... Looking at the wrong one. This is Adika. Ad Ad Adikia. So first of all, can I get rid of these biters somehow? Um, I think if I put down the right kind of buildings. I don't have any space built. Here we go. Something smaller. It's working, but... <laughs> Not where I need it to. Do I really need to put scaffolding all the way out here? Mower mod? Yeah. What if I do this? That kind of worked. Not really. Well, if I'd known this would be the consequence, I would have, like, turned off the biter spawner. Hmm. I can't really do anything right now. Alright, let's try locking this in. We're gonna go this symbol right here, if I can find it. Look at another surface, or take off and land. Well, the thing that I used to... Yeah, maybe taking off and landing. That didn't help. The thing that would get rid of the biter corpses when we went to um, the mysterious structures was to just step outside for a second. But I don't think there's going to be any equivalent to that here. launch. In hyperspace, things don't decompose. Alright. And back we go. They're still there. Mm Alright, let's just try and find that symbol. So it's this weird 
kind of stick thing. As if that narrows it down. It kind of looks like a ninja stick figure. I think this is the one I'm looking for. Yeah, it is. So we're going to put that down the bottom left. We need to ro rotate this thing exactly 180 degrees. There's also a console command. Uh, that might be good, actually. How do we console command the corpses away? Data no. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's stop this before things get out of hand. Where's our stick? Is this it? I think this is it. The Y stick. Here it comes. Alright, so we're going to lock that in. And then... Why do we have two targets? Uh-oh. I think I broke it. Next one is a tree. Oh, it's this right here. And then we've got this weird kind of, I don't know, two legs running upside down kind of thing. here though. Uh, what am I even looking for anymore? Like that. Should probably just look around until I see it first. Uh, I think that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. So we need to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. If you look closely at the ring, you can still see the cracks where it was shattered, indeed. Uh, next is... I don't even know what to call that. A three-branched weird stick thing. Oh, is that it? Uh, one, 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 two. I think that might 
be it. It's kind of hard to tell at this angle. Uh, I'm going to end up picking the wrong thing. Is that it? No. I can't see all the symbols over here. Let's have another look at this. That's definitely not it. This thing. No, that's not it. There's a deep space research that finds stuff? Uh, this one. Deep Space Zone Discovery. Wait, I thought we found Foenestra with just Zone Discovery. Data Known has posted the script. Oh, to remove the, um, the biters? Is that on the Discord? Cheers. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to do this. Uh, I guess I need to be not in navsat mode. Doesn't seem to be... ...working. Alright, I guess I'll rotate this this way until I see that symbol. And I've lost my place. Where is it? Adika. Is this it? One, two, one, one. It's kind of like clockwise with the legs. No, this is wrong. Uh, is this what I'm looking for? No. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. These are all wrong. Oh my goodness. Is this it? Did I already look at this one? Uh, it looks like the right one, but the wrong way around? No, this is it. Okay, cool. Um, and that needs to go all the way up here. No, not that way. I need to keep my eye on it. It was this one, wasn't it? I hope. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He could open the Informatron. Uh, that might be an idea. Oh, I see. Well, that would make it easier, wouldn't it? As the history of glyph sequences tried in the artifact. No, that's what we've already done. Uh, what about somewhere else, perhaps? At coordinates SV, negative, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I don't think these decimals are helping anything. It's the vector puzzle come back to haunt us. Oh no. Anything else? No. We're not we're not gonna find stuff in this in these other sections. History of glyph sequence is tried in the artifact with the corresponding coordinates. In descending order, top entry is the latest. In descending order, top entry is the latest. Okay. So it's not like larger number is better or anything. Let's just try continuing to plug in the symbols in a clockwise order from this thing. So we need like this Y shape kind of thingy. Oh, I think that's it. Yeah, so that is going four, five. It's eight. Eight and five, thirteen. In that direction. Can you put in coordinates and get glyphs to enter? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. It's not like I can type something here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, possibly. I think that went to fourteen. That's definitely a glyph. Then we've got a pointy arrow. Hopefully it's not hidden by biters. That's it, right there. So we've got... Uh, is this the last one we used? No, okay. 8, 16, 24, 
31 in this direction. Two, three, four. Twelve, twenty, that one give or take, uh, one off. that we have I don't even know what to call that symbol let's try to find it I suppose is this it I think I think so okay uh, so we're on the second last one. Let me just double check this. One, two, three. No, that's not it. Where is it? That might be it. Yeah, I think this is... Probably not what I'm looking for, actually. Uh, is this it? Yeah, yeah, this is the symbol right here. So one, two, three, plus eight in the clockwise direction. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That probably went over. Definitely did, I think, by a couple. Yep, that's our symbol. All right, one more. Uh, big weird S. What? Oh no! It. Oh no. Well, this is almost guaranteed to be a dud, then. I guess we'll just wait for it. Passion Sausage. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Something is coming through the portal. Something has no chance to even try to attack. What if I just leave it here? Let's just farm XP. I don't know how to translate the 11 symbols to pick 8 anyway. Yeah, exactly. Let's make absolutely sure we've got plenty of power. 
So, is it going to spawn these indefinitely? I think it's more complicated and interconnected than that. Well, whatever it is, I'm not figuring it out tonight. Check the goldfinch log? Goldfinch log. What is... What? If I remember correctly, the addresses are on the ring around the big symbol in the pyramids. Yeah, I've got a bunch of screenshots from those, but there's like 11 symbols around the edge, as opposed to the 8 that we can select here. How about the triangles below the symbols? They don't offer a whole lot. Yeah, no, there's not a whole lot to go on there. I guess... No, I don't guess anything looking at that. Triangle, triangle. It could be saying pick these three. Pick all of these. Doesn't really seem to... One, two, three... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exclude three would be very helpful. Which three are we excluding? If I exclude the three at the points of those triangles... I'm not doing that one again, those symbols are really hard to follow. I was about to say the points of that triangle. You also connected some stuff around the ring in the universe? Maybe they're directions of the symbols you should use. Directions of the symbols you should use? Uh, what do you mean by that? Connected some stuff around the ring. This stuff. It's just thermofluid. The anchor locations? I mean, we chose the anchor locations. If the ground thing in the pyramid is a map, they might point to the symbols on the ring that you should use. Yeah, they don't really. They don't appear to. I thought the anchors were predefined. Nope. Not at all. I 
haven't picked a good evening to try and figure this out either. I'm not really able to concentrate that well. I might have to give it a rest until tomorrow, to be honest. The next thing I might try is just exclude those three symbols that are at the points of that triangle. The shipwreck log? Shipwreck log. Do you mean the exploration journal? It doesn't add anything after spaceship victory. Um, anomaly ship log doesn't have any of those symbols. Uh, if we look over here, I don't think there was anything we could use. Anomaly ship log. Yeah, there was, like, just a bunch of flavor text. Demo Damas 82B AAI Hypernet Forward Cruiser. Are you sure it was flavor? There's way too much here for my brain to go through at this moment. I, I, I'm kind of skimming it, but... Oh, SV blah blah blah. Tyrus gate dialed into projection vector such and such. Predicted target Woob Galaxy. Goanestra. Oh, they got sucked over here. SV blah blah blah. Entering anomaly. How are we supposed to convert these to symbols, though? There's definitely not a single symbol in the text. Star mapping? See if you're getting closer without changing the glyph. Star mapping is... Distant galaxies can be identified. We did a couple of those. I mean, we can do another one. Coordinates saved to Informatron. Coordinate logs. No, those are the ones we've tried randomly. Star mapping. Okay. We've got a vector. We've got that symbol that corresponds to uh, Ad Adikia. And we've got no idea how to how to try to get those numbers in particular. Then we do coordinate math. Ugh. Uh, 
That's a bit much. There's a mapping between vectors and symbols. Do you want another head hurdy guess slash suggestion? Uh, I think I think I'm gonna have a look at it tomorrow with fresh eyes. At this point. All right. I think it's about time to look for someone to raid for today. A little bit earlier than usual, but... This isn't going anywhere, to be honest. Not today. How are you navigating so smooth with navsat and map zooming? Any mod slash settings? Just mad skills? Uh, depending on... Depending on if I'm on, like, the... If I zoom in from the map, it's really, really fast. Uh, but if I press N again for navigation satellite, uh, it's much slower. Congrats on victory. Thank you, Glacier Wolf. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's more like a fascinating thing to ponder than a tip to directly act on. Pretty sure it points to coordinates on the map might be able to see them, but I think they just indicate temple locations. Yeah, I honestly don't have a clue, to be honest. Alright, well, we, uh, we poured, uh, let's see, uh, 480 plus 90, 90. Uh, we poured 570 gigawatts into this thing to create a biter spawner. So that's cool. Mission accomplished. We did it. Uh, Mucky is streaming. We also got a couple of the usual suspects. Biter spawner, that's cool, indeed. I mean, look at this. We can kill as many biters as we want. We definitely couldn't do that before. Uh, sure, I think we'll drop in a monkey today. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna come up with any. I don't think I'm gonna come up with come up with any more ideas. Um, uh, for this right this instant. Thanks for the stream. Have a nice rest. Take care, Matron. Thanks for hanging out. Is the game trolling you again? Yes. Uh, we spent 570 gigawatts on a biter spawner. Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Take care, Chucky. Thanks for hanging out. Alright, let's head over and say hello to Mucky. Alright. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And uh, stay safe. See you next time. I call, and it currently has Power's 150 up. in the box. Oh. Okay, so where is Power? Power is down here. T-Hex, thank you so much for the raid. 120 people, g'day everyone.